scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, and who bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. Ignorance is dangerous. Ignorance is destructive. The strength of darkness is ignorance. The strength of darkness in the life of a man, in the life of a pastor, in the life of a leader is ignorance. What is ignorance? Absence of light. Absence of strategy. Absence of illumination. Absence of understanding. Say amen. There is so much ignorance in the body we have to con with God's light to drive away this darkness otherwise the days that are coming will um, will embarrass us very seriously the days that are coming now are separating the church into very two clear lines it's either you know what you are doing or you don't know what you're doing the disciples kept walking with Jesus they thought they were understanding what he was teaching and one time he went up to the Mount of Transfiguration and they were happy to shine and they brought somebody who had an epileptic uh, condition have you read that in scripture and they were so listen let me tell you something that you are hearing truths being told you does not mean you are enlightened i'm going to tell you what illumination is those guys had been with jesus they heard him every time and now they brought that man and were embarrassing themselves trying everything they knew to do and here comes jesus from the mountain and then they brought the man they said your disciples could not heal him and and they just stood dumbfounded hoping jesus would not also be able to heal so that it would show that their case was nothing special and jesus proved them wrong isn't it amazing how you pray that other people fail in an area you have failed so that it will show that your ignorance is nothing special it's so frustrating when you are failing in an area and somebody works flawlessly in that area. It cancels out every excuse you would have given. Hallelujah. That's why they hated Jesus. They hated Jesus because every time he showed up, his life and his actions was a message that frustrated the unyieldedness of the people. Jesus ministers to this person and at once he's healed. He comes into a temple and sees a woman 18 years bound. Have you read that scripture? I'm sure the people had been giving her all kinds of excuses. Madam, look, this and that and that, and she believed it. But here comes Jesus. And then he lays hands on her and even tells her, Madam, I'm surprised you are sick. Didn't they teach you? All the people who have been teaching every time, didn't they teach you that you are a daughter of Abraham? Did they not tell you the covenant that God had with him? Ah, the woman said, I, I, nobody told me. And the, the scribes were standing there, hoping Jesus would fail. And to their shame, he laid his hands. And the woman stood up straight. And they started finding excuses. Look at the excuses they brought. Don't heal people on Sunday. Don't give them food. There's all kinds of flimsy excuses. I pray that ignorance will be destroyed from your life forever. In the name of Jesus Christ. 
we never know how cheap Satan is until we stand on the strength of illumination. Hallelujah. Illumination is a very interesting word. Isaiah chapter 60, please. It's a scripture I've been meditating upon, not just because the Lord gave it to us as a prophetic word. Everything in your life is at the mercy of light. Everything in your life is at the mercy of light. Please hear me and take what I'm saying seriously. Your breakthrough in life is at the mercy of light. Your illumination, your depth of spiritual enlightenment, the quality of your ministry, the quality of your life. He says, my son, pay attention to my words. He says, incline them to your ears. Do not let them depart from you. He said, they are life to those who find them. Not those who hear about it. They are life to those who found them and health to their flesh it says in isaiah 60 verse 1 what's the first word arise arise can we get amplified is it possible i like the way Ad, Ad, amplified puts it very very interesting i came with a very strong burden tonight verse 1 amplified i like us to read it one to read Stop. Just that point. From the beginning to that point. One, two, read. Listen. This is, this is the prophet speaking. He says that circumstances have kept you at a level. Have kept your family at a level. Nobody crosses a particular line. Nobody crosses a particular dimension. A line has been drawn and ignorance sealed the line. And now he says, arise. It's a prophetic call. Break standards. Do something that has not been done before. And then he says, shine. Be radiant with the glory of the Lord. Why? For your light is come. You've heard me say it again. Not for your light is available. It has always been available, but until it comes to you. Are we together now? That's why two people, brothers and sisters, walk this earth and their, their, their testimonies are different. Like Goshen and Egypt. Others were dying in Egypt, whereas there was absolute tranquility in Goshen. Any man that ignores the illumination that comes from the word of God cannot be helped. That's the kind of person who no amount of deliverance, no amount of breakthrough, even if you pour one gallon of oil. You see, the trouble with the church is we, we uh, of course, that's, that's not applicable here, but I'm speaking to the church. We hate illumination, but we love what illumination only can bring. If I look at you right now and say, Sam, do you know that there's a problem around your life? I see somebody, I see an altar. Sam says, now you are talking. Are you getting the point now? Anything that excuses your responsibility to contend and understand the word, we love it and we embrace it. That's the reason why we love healing. We love deliverance. Because in our minds, we think it's a faster route. Instead of studying the Bible, I can just get deliverance once. You see, nothing in the kingdom was designed to replace another truth. They all complement themselves. This is why you can find believers, they can go through deliverance, they can have healings, but never able to walk in certain truths. It's always very comfortable to say, oh, demons are stopping me. There's a cause. There's this and that and that. But then many people in the body of Christ, believe me, many people are not passionate after knowledge. I was taught by the Holy Ghost 
that only second to your passion and desire for God, your next assignment should be an, a, an unquenchable pursuit for illumination. You must have a hunger for light. You must have a resentment for ignorance. You must have such, such a resentment for ignorance. We travel around and I look at people outside and I see how people are victims of what they don't know. You watch people all around, victims of what they don't know. You can see a woman sit down and, and please don't feel bad. I, I mean, see people trying to maybe fry yam or do something and, and you see that they are doing the best they know with the information they think they have. They never can know that life can be better. You see a lot of pastors, well-meaning and sincere people, but victims of darkness, victims of ignorance. And I made up my mind that in my life, I will be a bank of illumination. It's an assignment. It's a project I gave myself. That I will surround myself with mysteries like chariots. That on the strength of those mysteries, you will dominate. I've been meditating on this scripture. It says, arise. Brothers and sisters, when the Bible tells you to arise, it means access has been given to that light. Arise. Arise. Shine. For your light is come. The glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Verse 2. We're headed for verse 3, but let's just look at verse 2. Media, help us. Verse 2. It says, For behold, see, darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness the people. He said, But the Lord shall arise upon you and his glory shall be seen on you now this is the part the part that blesses me so much verse 3 ah Kabbalah, da, da. i receive it for my life every time i see this scripture i know that i will never fail in life i'm telling you it's like it's like you have found a jackpot he said gentiles shall come gentiles shall come to what i learned early in life that if you see people coming to you nine out of every ten are not coming for you they are coming for what you represent and what you carry the day you let what you carry sleep you get set for empty pews are we together now let me tell you the truth you see most preachers just think people like them they say my members love me <laughs> pray for them and let them not be healed for one month and they will show you that yes they love you but they love themselves more He says, and the Gentiles, brothers and sisters, something about your life will make Gentiles come. They will give every kind of excuse. People will say, but do you know it's not your tribe? While they are criticizing you, they are still coming. You know why? Because you see, brothers and sisters, let me tell you something about illumination. Illumination is not a gift. It's a price. It's, it's, not, it's an endangered commodity. You don't find illumination on the ground. There are not many people who are really enlightened. And when you really are enlightened, the Bible says Gentiles. It's a force. It can't be stopped. Gentiles shall come to your light. And this is the part that is even greater. It says they are kings. See, their kings don't come to your light because they are arrogant people. The kings believe they have light too. They too have some level of result. So your initial light will not impress them. It will impress the poor. It will impress the sick. But the kings will say we are watching. The queen of Sheba heard about Solomon. But it was not enough for her to come. But as the news kept resounding, a time came she could not deny it. And she carried her bounties. Up she came. See, let me tell you. There are people in your life right now. It's not like they are not seeing you. Your light is not yet notable, but they are watching. They are paying attention to the transitions that are happening. They are watching your church. They pretend like they didn't hear the testimony. But they need what you carry, but it's not yet impressive. When you continue, a day will come. Look at what happened. Do you know that the scribes, the centurion, they had been following Jesus in secret and one night, 
John chapter 3. One of them just came and said, Master, look, forget the fact that we insult you. We know, we know you are a man sent from God. Is it not in your Bible? They said, see, there is nothing as powerful as light. Men can argue it in the day, brothers and sisters. But time, when you become consistent, it says there are kings to the brightness. One result after another. You see, let me tell you, consistency is a sign of mastery. Anything you can, any result that is short-lived in your life was a guesswork. It was not founded upon truth. It was founded upon luck. Any dimension, listen to me very importantly. Any dimension of result you had seen in your life before and you cannot get it again. It didn't happen on the strength and is dangerous. Let me tell you what deceives us. Sometimes you are, I've taught you about prophetic atmospheres. You can come into a man's prophetic atmosphere and leverage on his secret place with God and temporarily it will activate some results in your life that makes you think it was your personal altar that brought it. And so you will stop contending because in that atmosphere some things happen. You will now go back and find out you are left with your own atmosphere and your own growth and you will not be able to lift it this is what happens a man of god can come for a program and come with his own depth of spiritual reality and the strings of covenants he has with god and you find out that momentarily that church can experience growth but the man of god will now think is just a new level he's not learned the spiritual keys that really bring growth are we together now and so after a while he will find out that the truth about the state of the church is revealed. Gentiles shall come to your light. They are kings to the brightness of your rising. Gentiles. I want it to, it looks very simple, but I want it to be buried into your head. That brothers and sisters, your escape from life is your access to light. The day you find it, start jumping. I don't care what is before you. Just start rejoicing because you are out forever. Light. Light. It says, they that sat in darkness, they have seen a great light. Illumination. Let me tell you what illumination is. Reading your Bible does not mean you have illumination. Cramming scriptures and being able to quote them out is not illumination. Are we together now? See, one of the challenges with the body of Christ is you hear me quote scriptures and it's easy for you to think because I'm quoting them, you don't have to be a child of God to be able to quote scripture. The concept of memory is a psychological thing. Anybody can learn it. We teach children to recite memory verse. Abi, Sunday school. John chapter 1 verse 1. In the beginning. And the child is saying it just like, like a robot. You think that child is enlightened? Of course, he's on his way to, en to enlightenment. But he's not enlightened. Many of us are frustrated because we think we have accumulated a lot of scriptures. And we think on the strength of those scriptures because we can speak them out. It means we are illuminated. No. You are only illuminated when understanding comes. When you can draw out the mysteries and the principles behind the scripture, illumination has come for you. Otherwise, everything you have is just the letter. And the Bible says it can kill. Learn this. It's not just because you found it in the Bible. Where it was written by his stripes, I am healed. And you say, oh, I found it. In the name of Jesus, Lord, this is your word. Hold on. You think you have gotten illumination. Are you seeing why we don't get results? Although we are holding scripture, it's unable to. The Bible says that we can make the word of God of non-effect. There is a technology that breaks the word of God and releases the life therein. That's what we call illumination. Two men were going with Jesus to Emmaus. You've read that scripture. And the Bible says, Jesus, the living word, the resurrected Christ was with them. They were discussing with him, but their eyes were closed. 
A man can be around Bible, around church, around revelation. You are listening to several messages, but until your eyes are open, you will never have illumination. And the danger is that your familiarity with scripture will convince you to think you have illumination, but your results will show that you've not gotten it, and it will frustrate you. That's the situation with many of us here. So you are spending time reading your Bible, which is good, but there is no illumination. Let me tell you how you will know. You can measure darkness in your life. Start looking at every area of your life one by one. The result there is a direct reflection of your access to light or otherwise. You will have to be very humble to admit what I'm telling you. Hallelujah. Gentiles will come to your light. Your assignment is not to run around chasing people, looking for favor. No. The reason why we are the ones running around people is because we do not have light. The Bible says Gentiles shall come to your light. They are kings to the brightness of your rising. If you want to come out of the situations that surround your life, the first key is light. The first key is illumination. There is something you do not know right now that is responsible for the quality of your life. Are we, are we together? Please listen, are we together? There is something you don't know right now. There is something you can know that will change your life forever. I sit down and I look at what the Lord has shown me now. And I look at what I used to know four, five, six years ago years ago and i cannot imagine that i was comfortable and even preaching at that level of ignorance between the last one year of my life i can turn back and see very clear evidences of ignorance beyond my imagination i would have argued with you if you told me that there were so many things i didn't know amazing there are many of us who are convincing ourselves right now that we are so enlightened but your life is betraying that conviction and so it's time to settle down and ask yourself very sincerely do I have light or do I just have the letter do I have light write this word down the mysteries of the kingdom I'm giving you a key to the prayer you may have been praying. The fast. If you're not interested in hearing what I'm saying, then forget, forget about a solution. Forget about results in your life. I really want you to get results. I really pray that we'll all get results. The mysteries of the kingdom. I've taught it here again and again that a mystery is a secret truth. A mystery is like a code of operation. A code of operation. A secret code of operation. In the kingdom, men reign on the strength of the mysteries. They have come to understand and apply write those two words understanding and application these are the two things that make the word of god profit you understanding and application in all you're getting it says get understanding wisdom tells you what to do understanding tells you how to do it wisdom tells you it is good to tithe understanding tells you how to tithe that you don't just carry money and just come and drop like a bribe the bible says honor the lord not give to the lord when it comes to tithing your attitude is as important as the substance you are holding are we together now
So the Bible teaches us that it has been given unto us. Say it has been given to me. Please say it, personalize it. It has been given to me to know the mysteries of the kingdom. Brothers and sisters, if what I'm telling you enters your spirit and you take it seriously, you will get up and walk. You will, in, within a month, the results you will produce within a month will dwarf what you've had for many years. Please believe me. Anybody who is not ready to sit down and understand the mysteries of the kingdom is a man that cannot be helped. I run away from people who do not have passion for understanding the word. They are dangerous. I'd rather stay with, I'd rather stay with a herbalist. A herbalist is more friendly, at least he's passionate about something, than, than a careless person who has no passion. His ignorance will affect you. Don't forget people have atmospheres. Right? The same way you contact sickness just by coming close to somebody and we say it's a communicable disease. What do you know about kingdom wealth? And who taught you? What do you know? What is your guarantee for a blessed life? I think I'm fine. You are joking. You are really joking. I went to school. You are joking two times. I'm very serious. I mean, jokes apart. I'm really serious this night. What do you know that will make you excel in ministry? I'm a man of God. They laid hands on me. You are really joking. What do you think will bring a crowd to your church? I'm probing, I'm showing you all the areas when I, when it's like a call and response. When I mention the area, tell me the mystery you know that supports your confidence that you will excel in that area. And you will see how we are moving with rings of ignorance. We are just hoping we know. Can you tell me what you think will make you remain in the next 20 years? What if somebody is calling your name to die tomorrow? I come for koinonia. God knows my heart is open. What else? See, I'm opening us up to see the need for strategic knowledge. You see, another mistake is many believers go for knowledge, but our knowledge is not strategic, it's not applicable. It's like a student who maybe got medicine. And he can sit down and say, I think I want to attend a, an architecture lecture. And he goes there. And then next tomorrow, he's in theater art. He's taking lectures, but it's not strategic. It's not constructive. At the end, he will never become a doctor. So many of us are puffed up by several messages we have listened to. You gather the message of anybody abroad, anything new, you just put them together. You swallow them like a drug and say, Satan, come and try me. And he says, you are still the same. Let me tell the truth. You have not changed. I don't want to waste my time gathering revelations and informations that sustain no power to produce results in my life. And the life of others. Do you know the danger, especially as a leader? Pastors hear this. You see, when people come, they submit to your tutelage. This is the danger. So, if while you are ignorant, they keep drinking from that ignorance until the day God delivers you. And you will hope that they are around when he delivers you. So you can tell them, look, I've been misleading you. Here's the correction. What if you are not there? They travel with that ignorance, start their own churches too. And the ignorance spreads. Hallelujah. There is something Bishop Oyedeko knows that we do not know. There is something he has handled that is producing the results. Are we together? Oh, he's just lucky. He had an 18-hour vision. Wait until he tells you the processes that led to that thing. That encounter. I want you to be tired of lack of results in your life. We don't serve God for results, but you are frustrated when there is no result in your life. In every area of your life. So what gives you confidence that you are not going to die? Many people have said I will not die and they died. So think quietly. What gives you confidence that you are not going to die? Bold face does nothing to Satan. I won't die. 
What gives you confidence that you will remain in hell? Oh, by his stripes I am healed. You ask how many people keep quoting this thing as they keep coughing out blood till they die. I'm, I'm challenging you. Is God speaking to us? What gives you confidence, brothers and sisters, that you will get up and travel and come back safe? The Bible never hid it from us that there are arrows that fly by day. He never said they flew once, they won't fly. They are constantly flying, even now. The Bible calls certain things a noisome pestilence. Right? He said not the destruction that wasted by noonday. It tells you a thousand shall fall. So there are so many people falling. Brothers and sisters, it's time for us to probe whether what we have is true light. Or just shadows of realities. What gives you a guarantee that you are going to get a job? Did you know that two, for instance, out of every maybe 10 or 20 graduates get jobs within their first five years of graduation? There are many first class students, two one students, two two students from prestigious universities who are still waiting, joining the queue. Even if they give 1,000 jobs in a parastatal, there are other people who even have other advantages. They have uncles and aunties. You, you don't have anybody. So, by default, you are disadvantaged. What gives you an edge? What makes you think you are going to rise? Is God speaking to us tonight? Hmm. Illumination. There are many pastors who give excuses. Oh, our church is not growing because the location is not, it's not very, the, the, the location is, is in a wilderness. Is that true? Is that true? Look what is happening to many families. We are victims of the arsenals of darkness. Anybody can die anyhow, any day. Anything can happen to anybody anyhow, any day. But he says, you will arise and shine. Oh, I respect the word of God. I not only believe it, I respect it. I found my way. My only confidence in life is on the strength. God took his integrity and put it to be released only when the word is understood. Listen, what you don't understand is the same thing as not having it. If I have... Can you help me with this camera? I, I won't touch it. Just show me where I shouldn't touch. Oh, I shouldn't touch here. All right. Can I hold this here? Is it okay? Look at this. This is a wonderful gadget. Are we together? Please, Pastor Femi, come. Come, just stand by my side. This is a camera. Is that true? He doesn't have any. Now, if I say who is better, I know you will say me. Because I'm holding one. I'm, I'm showing you cameras all around. And then you ask me, show me the pictures. And I said, look, forget about pictures. I have a camera. Are you not seeing it? No, no, no. Listen, listen. The goal of this camera is to snap pictures you can see. And I've been holding this camera for a long time. I'm even laughing at this guy. And say, you are standing no camera. We'll see where the pictures will come from. And you are holding this. There are no pictures. Are you seeing that? Who is truly better? I think it's this guy because he's in a point where he even knows he does not have. So his breakthrough can be faster. You, you think you have. If someone else comes with camera too, you say we are colleagues because you are holding camera. You see what deceives a lot of people. Uh, the moment they hear a man of God, they say we are also we are fellow pastors in this vineyard. We know what we are doing and they will never sit down to learn. The woman with the issue of blood said, look, I, I know I have a problem. I'm not guessing. But the scribes will come for Jesus' meetings. They will come as contemporaries. When he's speaking, they'll be nodding. He knows the law. And they remain there in darkness. And there were other sinners who would come and receive. This is the problem with the church. We think because we have scriptures. The moment I say Isaiah 6, he say, oh, arise, shine. That's where he's going. But has it produced results? Has it produced results? This gentleman is holding a camera. 
do you know his camera can even be better than this one yet it's not producing results no understanding let me tell you lack of understanding is as bad as ignorance you can have knowledge and it can be wasteful if there is no understanding yeah thank you The more I know God, the more I see how predictable this life can be. Listen, the more I know the ways of God, the more I see how predictable a man's destiny can be. As scattered and haphazard as it looks, there is a spiritual rhythm. Light can show you the path. It says, thy word, O Lord, is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. I'd like you to shout it after me. I'm tired of confusion in my life. Say, I'm tired of guessing in my life. That you are faced with challenges. And then you say, I think this is the key. You now try it. It doesn't work. You now go back. Do you know that certain challenges cannot give you a long time to keep guessing? If you don't get it once, it can destroy you. There is somebody out to destroy you in your village. And that person's destruction is only at the mercy of what you know that can bail you out. Your ignorance, if you allow it too long, you may be caught up in that tragedy. Are we together? This is what I tell myself all the time. Joshua Selman, you must get rid of ignorance and confusion in your life. And the key is the word of God. Listen, listen, listen. No other, no other instrument can give you true light outside the word of God. Make no mistakes about it. I've read a lot of books. I've read psychology books. I've read business books. I've read all kinds of things. Any principle or thought that is not consistent with the word of God is going to add to your confusion and ultimately waste your life. Because there are people who are trying to get enlightenment outside the world. The Bible calls their light darkness. Are we together now? I, I see a lot of people teach and talk and is even stepping into the church. Whenever we are teaching certain things, especially about success, we, we push the word of God out and we say, just leave Bible, this one, we are now talking common sense. Anything outside the word of God is going to confuse your life. What is contained in this word? Mysteries. Mysteries. Keys. Kabbalah Tayada keys that open doors these are ancient keys brothers and sisters those see there is no door in your life that has not been opened by somebody before the bible lists them in hebrews chapter 11 men who had these keys and did so many great things knowledge say it again i'm tired of guessing i'm tired of guessing i'm tired of guessing we're guessing over our finances. We're guessing over ministry. We're guessing over the anointing. I think I'm anointed. No, you are not. If you're anointed, there should be an evidence. If there is no evidence, you are not. Calm down and look for the keys. Hallelujah. If what happened to you last year remains with you this year, then it's your fault. We must contend for light. Everybody said there is a light that can deliver me. Everybody said there is a key that can open that door. Brothers and sisters, there is no door that is made without a key. But every door is at the mercy of the key. He said, I have given to, it's been given to you to know the mysteries. The mysteries of the kingdom. What keeps you in divine health? Look at sicknesses flying all around. You enter a restaurant, you don't even know where they got the water from. And you are eating and you are happy and you are running around and you want to live long right now there are all kinds of documentaries that almost call everything bad i saw one that said microwave causes cancer for god's sake me that has to microwave food almost every day so that means i'm going to die young 
what do you understand by the life of God when the Bible says great is the mystery of godliness that God can dwell in a man have you caught the his the, the revelation of that truth that God can dwell in a man that God can dwell in a man let's take our finances for instance at least this concerns us what do you know about your finances or are you hoping that one day you will be blessed that's a costly hope sister do you have any shorty that a man is going to come and carry you believe me if all you have is that i'm fine or i'm in a place where there are gentlemen you are joking see let me tell you something knowledge truly kills fear uh, stand up pastor femi stand up promise watch these guys please sit down sit down were you afraid of sitting did you turn back to even check you know why because they are sitting based on an enlightenment they know what this chair can do are we together now they know that this chair can take their weight they are not thinking about it i'm not holding this mic wondering if it will shock me i don't expect it to are we together now i'm not holding this trusting it to scatter no 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 this guy is not playing this keyboard hoping that the sound will just stop he knows it should continue because he's playing it with knowledge i gave an example last year i think when i was teaching i don't know if he was here or another meeting if i call somebody who cannot play this keyboard and i say sit down look how wonderful what he's playing is are we together now that person who doesn't know how to play keyboard cameraman come uh, do you know how to play keyboard don't waste our time come all right mike please stand up quickly just do whatever you think you know to do quickly one minute now let's see look at me how many of you know that this keyboard is absolutely obedient it will produce any sound now play anything go ahead you may be making sense go ahead all right watch this now this guy thinks the problem is the keyboard are we together now because he doesn't believe anything is wrong with him ah why are these kids not doing why are they not playing like this the problem is never the keyboard the keyboard was designed to be played but it has rules there is a rhythm you see the keys black white everything scattered all right okay thank you thank you go and do your job all right so mike play please play something same keyboard same church same ministry same business same academics same nigeria play go ahead anything same keyboard that guy said his government that guy said is 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 nigeria that is not giving job that guy says machines that cause cancer i mean look at this listen the bible now watch this when everybody's in a pool of ignorance and one person stands out what do you think will happen the world was designed to not ignore spectacular things it's impossible for a thing to be spectacular and not draw attention are we together now is your life spectacular enough to draw everyone including your destiny helpers those who can say look benga come and take five plots of land i just want you to be around me because there is a testimony that you carry something that is notable my goodness life will become so cheap for you when you pay the price to carry light you see access to illumination is truly a sign of god's love because not everyone listen not everyone will have the opportunity to go to school not everyone will have the opportunity to learn english not everyone will have the opportunity to be born by rich parents but everybody can have access to illumination and brothers and sisters when you find it it will change your life forever i kept thinking about this really and i was telling myself oh god can you make the lives of your people so predictable 
absolutely predictable absolutely predictable see one of the one of the indices for measuring favor is is um the bible calls it it says you will be a delightsome land people like to be around you because they have a track record that something happens to them every time they are close to you i like getting close to the ma welfare mama because something happens to me every time are we together now? <laughs> who is seeking you for what you carry is it not surprising you that you are a nuisance to everybody around you they started it quietly but now they are open about it everybody is telling you you are really a nuisance to me pastors who is seeking you who calls your phone and will not mind calling it hundred times because he knows that if you pick his problem dies who is willing to pick your call that even if you say i don't have credit say no problem me i have money it's, it's, i need light they sought for jesus to a point that people tore zinc they knew they could negotiate with the owner of the house later on. Who has been that desperate about your grace? Who has coveted your anointing so bad they can pay anything for it? Light. Who has defended you in the presence of your enemies because of the degree of impact you have made in his life? And the person has said, I will never hear anybody talk against Sam. What Sam has done to my life, even when they are right, I will fight them. Hi. See, brothers and sisters, there are cheap pathways you can find in this scripture. And build yourself out of this wicked world. Everyone say illumination. Say understanding. There is something we all do not know that is responsible for where we are. The problem is we are too arrogant to learn. We are too pompous to admit the fact that there is something we do not know. How many young people brag around because they read one Brian Tracy book and they say, I'm a financial expert. You see that? There is so much ignorance in our generation. I'm speaking to people inside and outside. So much ignorance in our generation, spiritually every man of god believes him too he's a captain of his own even if there's no result and everybody comes and once you can join one scripture and just say this. i don't say it in a cynical way i know the things that are not in my life and i'm desperately pursuing them with every sense of humility and hunger and even if it is one of our little ones here that have it will not cost me anything to kneel down and say show me the way this is what we do not have. This is one thing I respect about this man of God. I'm sorry I have to use you, Pastor. This is, this is, this is an elderly man. But the humility. This man has pursued me like, like, I don't even know what to say. I was shocked seeing him. I said it again. The day, I, the day he came over to my place and I was talking. I mean, these people eat my teaching in their church as if you will never be the same man of God. It's a law. You will never be the same. I know why many of you are not being changed. Although you are in a place of tremendous change. Pride. Familiarity. You do not discern. You do not discern. Please listen to me. The Bible says you don't discern the Lord's body. And for that reason many are weak. Many are sick. Oh I've had koinonia message. Activating breakthrough. Destiny I've had it. I was even there. They used me as an example. And you think that letter is illumination. And somebody somewhere. In one one room made with mud. Will download it and say Lord I have found it. I found the key. So destiny help us. And be praying it and the Holy Ghost will say this is it. A woman came from Benway State. I think I, I can't remember last year or so. This woman came with her husband. They were pastors for many years yes they had struggled it's a terrible thing to be in ministry without any helper you pay for everything by yourself <laughs> when when the woman listen when the woman 
I don't know how, I think one, somebody here in, in Koinonia went there and gave her just that message. Activating breakthroughs, the ministry of destiny helpers. She received that message, digested the message. She said she listened to that message at least 20 or 25 times. There are messages in my life I've listened to up to 1,000 times. One message. God is my witness. One message. I'm a product of many anointings. What are you a product of? Your world, your rema, your deception. You keep moving around in confusion with no result. Staring up expectations in people. Oh, I've come for this meeting. You will see what God will do. They say, we are watching. At the end of you, say it's just that there's no time. Otherwise, you would have seen what God would do. It's a lie. There is time. There is time. Nothing will ever cover for lack of light. Not suit, not good dressing, not English, not even Rema. It says, you, if you are not rising, your light has not come. It was designed to come and pick you from where you are. In your name. We will rise. I don't know. You reign on us. It's in your name. We will rise. I don't know. You reign on us. In your name. We will rise. I listen to at least one koinonia message i know there are uncommon mysteries forget that it came through me i have learned many things from my messages than many messages i listen to it and i'm praying and when is the time when apostle is prophesying i kneel down and i lift my hands as he's speaking see listen you have to learn what i'm telling you because this year make up your mind not to cheat yourself see arrogance with no result is not leading it's it's like a man wearing suit with not even five naira is there he say it's just that i kept the money so no 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 i'm tired of lack of results there is a higher standard god is gauging me with god will not gauge me with the same standard he's gauging many of us because to whom much is given much is expected are we together now Thank God for all of the breakthroughs and the impartations during my retreat for this year. I said, any ministry I honor, we, it is like a rattling. We, you know how an earthquake is? Huh? An earthquake or a tsunami. That's what is going to happen in that church. Any ministry, including your church, man of God. My goodness. Yeah. To increase capacity. When you step in, you break chains. You shatter darkness. When you do that, for every ministration you go, there are 10 more waiting for you from it. You see that? Not the one that you just go and say, well, maybe the next one is September and you're just sitting. Of course, you don't use those things just as indices, but there is not enough fire. That's why. Because needs are still there. People suspect you have a track record of not producing results. So nobody's ready to invest in your anointing. Hallelujah. Please hear what I'm saying. What have you learned? What truth do you know that can bail you out? What do you know that can bail you out? If I give you a mic right now, I say, come, teach us one kingdom mystery you have learned. What will it be? What will it be? You see that many of you are just enjoying fellowship, but you are not really holding on to something. Kai, he said, I know whom I have believed. He said, I am persuaded. I've held on to these things. It was the apostle Peter that said, that which we have seen, 
that which we have heard that which our hands have handled you can't tell me i'm not holding this no matter how you deceive me i'm holding it i can feel it i have become one with that experience what do you know about the anointing of the holy spirit we keep talking about the ability of god working in a man you jump at it you fall under that anointing but what do you know about it what do you know about the anointing and getting a job what do you know about the anointing and breakthrough in ministry what have you learned god asked me to pause with the series we'll start because some of us what we need is not just a new message what we need is getting back to say look i need to get this thing now there are certain truths that i know and i will never waste my time in certain levels of ignorance every time i meet a wall before me i know that there is an anointing i must invoke that will call a man a man must appear for that door to open so my prayer is very strategic and intentional i don't pray stupid prayers i pray with intelligence lord where are the helpers i call them because i know if a helper does not appear that door will not open and here comes the helper because i know how to call them they never come on their own they are always called you have been waiting for them you will wait forever there is a mystery that calls helpers are you seeing that right so our parents are waiting. God will send somebody to pay the rent. You will wait forever. There is a mystery. Brothers and sisters, please hear me. Am I challenging you tonight? I want you to get this thing. I love you. That's why you see me teach this. I want you to hold on to something. Don't hold on to shadows. We are in a hurry to teach. We are in a hurry to do ministry. When we should sit down and learn. I tell you the truth, I wish that I can just have a vacation of four or five months. Decembers are usually happy periods when we round up program because that two or three weeks where I don't have to teach anybody, I now go back to feed my spirit. I preach an average of two or three messages every week aside from school of ministry we are resuming. So there are so many things sucking out of me. Time is so limited for me. But many of us have everything. All the messages are there with the testimonies. Do you know you can sit down crying in a room and the light to liberate you is in a message lying down there and the angels are standing close to you and say, activate us. What is all this? What do you need to learn again? And you call your uncle. He says, I won't pick. And you are there helpless. And the angels are saying, what is uncle? We are here. What is uncle? Have you not read in the Bible that strangers shall feed your flock? Which one is uncle again? But in your mind, according to what you know, if your uncle does not pick your call after two days, you are dead. Who told you? Aya. Have you not had the ravens brought bread for Elijah? Where did the ravens come from? Lack of light has limited us. Please hear what I'm saying. God can raise helpers for you. You have tied God. How many pastors sit down and say it's, it's, it's because we are young people, it's because we have not put balloon around the church. That's why people are not coming. No. And we get angry and fight ourselves and move in ignorance and, and, and we have protocol and PA, no power, no grace, no understanding, no results. The trouble is that they now invite us for programs and you see people writing our ignorance and they go back to go and practice it and come back shocked and confused. Lean and hungry. Say, I'm tired of guessing. Say it again. I don't know how to beg you and make you believe what I'm saying. I honor the Lord for what he's doing in this ministry. The crowds outside, the crowds inside. But brothers and sisters, hear me. And I say this with all humility never make a mistake to think it is guess it can be reproduced anywhere the same result it was founded upon mysteries not luck are we together yeah. jesus went to the desert the same crowds came he went to the mountain he went by the the people men and women climbed the mountain stayed there three days he had to now say let's feed them Is God speaking to us? Who told you God cannot change your story? 
who told you that God cannot lift you up. There is something you don't know. I'm talking especially to the sisters. This our dependency mindset must die this year. This sitting down and hoping. Not valent, when is Valentine? Answer me. I'm not laughing. When is Valentine? Next when 14. Next week Friday. Next week Sunday. It's possible right now that many of us have expectations. And in our prayer, I'm not saying you are carnal, but you are just hoping that somebody will be the one to come and bail you out. Listen, this word will never profit you until the light breaks and the mystery behind it enters you. When you hold on to it, go to bed. You have entered your Sabbath. See, I don't care if at the time you are holding it, Bishop Oyedeko was there probably with one or two clothes, but when he caught that revelation, he said he shouted, I can never be poor. Can you say you can never be poor? Honestly, can you say it? Me, I can say it. Oh, my goodness. I wave poverty by it, wave me back. Deal done. Because for as long as there is one sick body, hmm, for as long as there is one life that must be changed, you see. There is something you can hold on to, brothers and sisters, that will wipe your tears. Look at Frank Edwards. He carried something he knew and sits upon that keyboard it, and bought cars with it and started an NGO with it and his blessing lies with it. What have you been ignoring that is authorizing Satan in your life? What have you been ignoring that is stopping you from entering school. You are saying jam is hard. Keep quiet and think. What has been stopping you? I'm on my way to paradise. I'm on my way to paradise. Listen, let me tell you why I'm teaching you this. You see, my heart will bleed. If we keep having people, I told you the Lord showed me that this year, Koinonia will be like a place of pilgrimage. I saw several people coming. It will be a painful thing to see pastors, businessmen come and giving testimonies and say, I just had three messages and it changed me. And all you do from now till December is to clap. Wow. Is it true? A miracle happened yesterday in a meeting. A lady who had a hole in her teeth teeth supernaturally appeared before everybody and the people were watching i don't know what some of them thought i was but let me tell you with that kind of result you will not be hungry i promise you are we together oh no 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 hunger you and hunger will part way you are not selling it but somebody will be too grateful and people were crying and just watching and i sat down and i looked i said my goodness when you catch this thing bah, you have caught it if it's not there it's not there hallelujah there's a particular university they are currently doing an election of the vice chancellor and all of that i think you guys will bear me witness when we're coming and several people were calling me oh i'm going to come will it work How? i mean these are people distinguished personalities that on a good day if i knock their office they should arrest me and go and lock me or something there is something they need and god didn't put it outside me every useful thing is inside me wisdom anointing i love the lord you can never take it and leave me we must go together if you need it this body will enter a plane with it we we'll all go together that's why you should never 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 not be successful in your life shout it again i hate confusion, I hate confusion. see satan comes to you and manipulates your life he studies your ignorance and uses it as his tools he studies your ignorance he can create illusions out of your ignorance satan is not a fool he doesn't just run and come into your life he takes a track record he looks at the areas you don't know anything about or where you have not respected the authority of the word of god 
And so he can look at you and say, do you know that until they do arrange you for you on internet, the husband is not coming? Because he has studied and he has seen that you have not found out that light that male and female, he created them. That the Bible says, seek out of the book and read. None shall want her mate. He searches the bank of the word in you and does not find that mystery present. And he says, use this. And all of a sudden, you are a Christian. You love God. You are praying in tongues. But the next thing, you now start going to join all kinds of useless groups because you are looking for a husband. And he takes advantage of you. And he will bring a demon to your life and destroy you. You will marry in two months and suffer for the rest of your life because of ignorance. And you find out that in that one mistake, your ministry has been implicated. In that one mistake, your children have been implicated because they are going to grow under the atmosphere of a bad father. God is telling you this way. The authority over your life is saying this way. And people say submit. What have you ignored that is responsible for the strength of darkness in your life? I'm chasing after you no matter what i have to do for i need you more and more i'm so aware of my ignorance so i'm chasing after you no matter what i have to do lord i need you more and I want to challenge you koinonia you have to be determined go back home tonight and write a list of all the major areas of your life where you truly know that you are not getting results humble yourself and pursue light are we together now are we together now forget about valentine or whatever it is of course celebrate it god bless you but i'm telling you this if you want a happy day february 14th every day of your life find out what has God said do I understand what is don't think what you think God said you see that you can assume it's like exams every student sits down they say start and everybody's writing and when you come out the person will say what was your answer this person say five my say my own was three and two of them believe they are right it's left for the lecturer by the time you see zero what does that mean it means you were wrong Say, ah, but the man didn't mark my script. Well, you still got zero. Everybody who scored five got it. For you did your calculation and arrived at three, meaning you failed. You didn't get it well. It's up to you to adjust and say, no, no, no. I think I missed something. Or be arrogant and say it's a bad man waiting for another man. Many of us never will admit that we are ignorant. It doesn't cost me anything. You, you don't know how I, whenever God tells me, son, I think you need to know more. There is a dimension of me you do not know here and you have to correct it i jump at it i almost spend a vigil online searching for everything looking for any koinonia message that relates to that if god says son you like ladies this night be like him where are all those hot messages i preach on character be like him um um the, uh, he heaven and hell realities of heaven and hell part one and two that's what i will listen to till tomorrow till it irons out that dimension in me you don't tremble at his word that's why we don't change when you look at ministries and see the ministries that there is the anointing on their life you see what is happening you just sit down you see you will never preach people into running away from results because you are not getting it. If I am not getting results in my life right now, and Pastor Femi is getting results, and I try to trivialize what he's doing to make you consider him unserious, I'm only joking. Because the truth is, you have problems. And do you know members know where to get answers? Oh, yes. They know where to get answers. I told you, was it last week or week before last, that if I am an unbeliever, when I'm sick, I promise you I'll go to Babalao. I won't do it in the secret. All these go to the secret. I will do it openly. Let camera even follow me. I will go there. And then I will wait for the one person who will come to challenge me. And I will bring another person as sick as me. And say, I will kneel down and apologize to you if you heal him. Otherwise, go back home. As simple as that. 
are we together i foresee that a time will come that thing will happen in church members will hold charm and come for service with it the moment they are talking before altar call somebody will stand up and say sir this guy bought for you this is the charm that brought it and i can throw it if you can prove it otherwise that's what happened between moses and pharaoh he had to take the rod and pharaoh said get out of this place you grew up you ate the food that this god ra brought now you are coming to destroy it and moses said i found someone higher nobody great nobody greater no nobody greater than you listen moses said as at that time i thought ra was the highest of the gods and so my allegiance but i found i found somebody in the wilderness and he called himself i am and he said that he's coming to show his sovereignty and when he swallowed up this and after nine ten plagues pharaoh had to give up pastors let's stop deceiving people we know where we are telling the truth and where we are not telling the truth we know where we have results and where we don't have results let's admit it and not explain creation is not waiting for the explanation of the sons of god is waiting for the manifestation there are people who have traveled from far and come for this meeting now some of them have come desperate to receive something imagine if all these people traveled all the way and then they just go back like that If you don't listen to what I'm telling you, brothers and sisters, you will be very frustrated in your Christian journey. Because the end of every assimilation of truth is that it produces a result for you. By the time you get up and go home, now you already know that every time you see your father misbehaving, you now know because you've received superior intelligence that this man is not acting on his own volition. He's been influenced by powers. You see, the devil can no longer use his habit to keep the spirit of anger in you because another light has delivered you. So when you come out from the place of prayer and he starts ranting like a beast, you know you already have superior intelligence and you find out that Satan was using that to keep the spirit of anger so he would destroy you. But now another light has delivered you. And then number two, you now know that he's not fighting with him physically and saying, Daddy, I wound you. The moment he says that, you know where to go shake it and all of a sudden your father will see you and it's as if he's afraid there's something wrong but there are many of us you leave koinonia you come and you are fighting you slap your father you beat why are you acting in ignorance is god speaking to us now have you not noticed how every time you are pressing into God, it looks like there are people all around you who can station themselves to do things that would destroy you. They are trying to fight something. Hallelujah. I pray for you in the name of Jesus Christ that light will give you peace, 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 peace. It will swallow away fear from your life and it will give you peace. When you have a revelation, for instance, hear me, that no human being, no man born of a woman can take your life. Not with enchantment. I can only imagine how many places my name has been called in different altars. Maybe when I'm traveling now, they now say die. It's difficult to kill me. I look just physical, but they that are with me, the mysteries that surround me are many many like you see obama you can just see him walking you try to shoot him before you leave the gun you are dead you don't know who was watching you you just know they shot you you didn't see anybody but a bullet entered you because what is more than what you are seeing koinonia hear me i want you to hold your bible please hold your bible inside and outside hold your bible say after me lord jesus this year i pray that the mysteries that would have to be opened for my destiny to change 
hidden in this word may they be open for me the mysteries of prosperity the mysteries of influence the mysteries of the anointing the mysteries of favor the mysteries of advancement the mysteries of breakthrough the mysteries of the anointing the mysteries of grace release it upon me oh god if god answers that prayer you'll be a wonder this year because it will surprise you it's not because there is nobody to give you the job there is something you have not done the earlier you admit it the faster and the better for you oh there's one guy that said i should just hold on when a job when there's job interview he will give me that's too costly you are living your life at the mercy of somebody if it now doesn't work you will hate the person why don't you live forget about all these things and wait upon god are we together now oh a lecturer promised me that this time around i will get a in my project what if that lecturer is sick and is not there during your defense then you fail woe to him that puts his strength in a man oh god said i'm going to enter the house how do you think you are going to enter the house just because you think you are earning fifty thousand, can fifty thousand give you a house you too ask yourself look at see this is how foolish i'm sorry to say it, but this is how foolish some of our parents are they they, they whenever they are, they are looking at their salary oh fifty thousand so let's calculate it will never work that way the devil will use it to destroy you one sickness will wipe away the budget and the devil will keep mocking us you've raised five hundred thousand one sickness will wipe it away but you can walk certain principles and a man will lack his sleep in the night and get up in the morning and say sorry i don't know who this person is but the lord has called me and said pastor alpha god has said i should change your story and you'll be sitting there dumbfounded and god will say you ask for it i said ask and you shall receive but the bible says that we not pray amiss mothers fathers everybody please hear me there is a way out of everything i believe there is a way out of everything sister that marital delay in your family can be broken to pieces if a certain kind of revelation just one more thing i'll add to us and we'll pray one of the mysteries that i have learned in my life that has changed my life forever is the discernment of the body of Christ I know there are many mysteries I keep repeating these things because I want your life to change all men are not equal criticize me but just listen all men are not equal if you take that mindset this is not supposed to be a bad statement please don't misunderstand me i wish it were a lie but it's the truth all men are not equal it was the apostle that was teaching the church in corinth he said because you cannot discern the lord's body the organogram of and the structure he said for this cause for not discerning i'm not talking of holy communion for not discerning the body and the individuals that have been stationed there who are carriers of your breakthrough he said some are weak how many people have died today because they have not discerned what god has put in the body it's like a table if you come to eat on the table is it not what you know that you will eat you see something looking yellow you are not sure and you leave it there and later you find out that that thing is good for your health that's how we are listen I'm talking about light and illumination the Bible says let the word of Christ dwell in us in all richness Colossians 3 16 but you see one of the greatest blessings of God to the church outside the Holy Spirit is the positioning of gifts in the body please listen to me I've told you that there are two ministries you must encounter for your destiny to open the moment you meet Christ there are two ministries you must encounter the apostolic and the prophetic the bible says the church was built with a very definite system 
it says Christ being the chief cornerstone and directly above it are foundations the apostles and the prophets now that's not to say other um, members of the body it's the same thing you don't give your life to the Holy Spirit you don't come and say Holy Spirit you died for me he didn't die for you although they are equal with God but salvation has been put in no other name there is an office that ministers salvation are we together that's how it is you have passed listen there are certain dimensions in life you can never take yourself you hear me say this thing all the time yet no matter how arrogant you are no man can bless himself there are certain dimensions that it will take a representative of these ministries it's an election by grace to open up certain doors for you and you will walk in it as if the devil never existed there are many churches who have done everything but ignored these ministries and many of you have been trained to criticize all kinds I've, I've told you here just keep quiet when it comes to the body of Christ serve God with truth and dignity there are many of our parents that are grounded God will invite a man to their churches and they will look at the person and say this young guy or God will invite somebody who will come and maybe the person cannot speak English very well and they now sit down intellectually and the man is teaching he may not be able to talk very well but there is an office he occupies are we together now he may talk and mix it with language and you are there calculating intellectually say I thought I, I need somebody with Rema tell me Greek and Hebrew words whereas the person sent he came out dressed like John like 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 a prophet even Jesus could not ignore the ministry of John and excel because when he came he looked for the one who that mantle was upon that foundational mantle John said ah I've seen you say no suffer it to be so I, I will not break protocol. Jesus would have been surprised if he didn't pass through John. When it was time, the Holy Ghost spoke to certain apostolic councils, separate me Paul and Barnabas. He spoke to them. There was something they did upon Paul and Barnabas. Did you know that Agabus had daughters that were prophets, but they never excelled in ministry? Look at that. They died with their prophetic grace. Because although they were prophets, they ignored the structure of the body. Listen, there are many people the Bible talked about for a little time and you never had them again. That's why some of us are where we are. Gods of ourselves with our own rema bragging all around. There was a pastor friend, I used to watch him. Um, the guy loves me so much, he admires me, but... I think for a very long time I used to see him. He just comes around, laughs around. When they are prophesying or speaking, he's even embarrassed sometimes to lift his hand. He just, he just lifts his hands as if he's waving. And I knew that this guy would never receive anything. In his mind, he thinks he will receive. Let me tell you something. There are requirements from receiving from these gifts. One of the requirements is honor. 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 You must honor both the person and the office. He says, he, please, this is not human worship. I don't want to, I have no business. I wish I were not the one preaching this. I wish you were just hearing a tape so that you will believe it's true. I have seen, listen, I have passed so many people who there is enough grace to wipe their tears and their families. And I have been shocked the way the anointing was locked up within me as I watched these families go down in penury. Because honor is the key that releases the anointing. Jesus entered certain cities and passed like this. A woman was pressing his garment and other people were looking at him. What have you ignored that has refused your door from opening? Please hear what I'm saying, Koinonia. Don't wait until after 10 years of miserable failure and then you now think and say, let me listen to this message hear it now and rise wake up and leave rise above your contemporaries as if the devil does not exist a few who have learned this key have broken every limitation and barrier the bible says for this cause many are weak when it was time when sickness when the serpents were destroying the people nothing happened to moses question what did the snake see that made them not to bite moses it's in your bible 
right that he told him lift up a serpent is it not true look at how people were immune in the bible things were happening to others elijah there was famine he never was even concerned about the famine because he knew that nothing would happen to him there was famine in samaria elisha came he was not saying hey i'm dying give me food he came and saw women eating their children and said what happened there was another mystery that gave him supply brothers and sisters there is a way out of every situation in your life you can come to a man of god to pray for you but you can just come as if you are coming to somebody who manufactures charm do you know even if jesus appears right now there are people who encounter him and still go back unchanged yes absolutely don't you think because he's jesus he will change the law is still the same if you cannot honor his representatives then you do not honor him the result will still be the same who told look at how many parents please you're a pastor how think of how many parents in your church or how many elderly people have come to meet you to say man of god you see let me tell you something many people just believe that ministers and, and, and newspapers have made this happen they believe ministers of the gospel are daft people fraudulent people how to manipulate money from members and enrich themselves that's the mindset newspaper gives and many people carry that faulty mindset and some of us as young as we are that's our thinking look how our families are suffering you pray individually and say god help god said i answered the prayer sins open your eyes and see you have ignored ministries that can wipe your tears you are there a, 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 a program that you will finish five years you are still there seven years on your verge of moving you have never said for once can i not is there no system in the kingdom to bail me out for this cause i'm just sharing with you one mystery i think this is the cheapest of all mysteries because you don't even have to be intelligent to access this i have watched with shock the way I have ministered to people and their lives have changed. A, a woman gave a testimony and this is true. This is, I, do, I, I don't mean it in any idolatry. The woman said her daughter had been telling her to listen to one koinonia message. And she said she always used to ignore it because, you know, she had problem with praying in tongues and all of that. You, you know what I'm saying? And one day things got bad and she said she was listening to one message in her dream that her daughter was listening to and then God was, you know, using my voice to just challenge her and say go and listen to that message and change your story she said she told her daughter to transfer it into her phone listen there was someone that had owed her for a long time as soon as she transferred that text message just the text as in uh, you know how it, you transfer a message it just touched her phone that was how the person called her and said where are you come and meet me at the bank the woman said this is a lie what is going on here it will only work for those who already have honor presiding them otherwise you will pass it like this and move on. when the child of the shunammite woman died she was not confused she knew where to run to she said saddle your ass he said don't stop whoever asks you is all well say it is well and he sent gehazi gehazi came and looked at the woman he says oh well say it's well give me a chance i know the person i'm looking for and she went there and said you represented something in the spirit that brought this child otherwise this child would never have come know what to do with this child she put his office under pressure elisha tried everything spoke the child refused to wake up and he took his mantle he said even if it's for me to be foolish see there is a way you can honor a man of god and put pressure on his office not anointing his office it will force him to release something into your life when i say honor i don't mean money a deep a deep seated there are few men of god i've met in my life and the way i honored them when they were speaking and blessing me i knew it came from their spirit I'll find somewhere to stop because I want us to pray. Brothers and sisters, results are possible in the spirit. It's not a matter of luck. It's time for you to start knowing what you are not doing. 
the mystery of the communion many of us take communion just as something they do in church get me wafers get me zobo okay there's five alive bring it and they're like, oh god thank you and you just throw it you just took breakfast whereas it has delivered a lot of people tithing you do it but not with understanding so the moment promise comes to stand here or anybody you just you are just waiting those who are tight as you come and stand and although you are supposed you are doing something spiritual it's not working because it's not done the bible says honor the lord he didn't say bribe him you squeeze your envelope you just come and stand and say oh yeah god take no when abraham met melchizedek the king of salem that ancient city listen do you know it was after he gave the tithe immediately god spoke to him and said fear not he was teaching him a mystery he said i'm about to bless you it takes courage to be prosperous because you are about to be controversial so fear not there is something i'm about to open in your life that will make people say well, when did it happen he said don't be afraid I know I'm about to bless you, but my first instruction is fear not. You have done something that is about to bring prosperity. People will not understand the mystery. So be courageous to take the criticisms. Because I'm about to change your life. He said, I am your exceeding great reward. Abraham is so intelligent. The moment God said, I am your exceeding great reward. It, the, Abraham started thinking generational blessings because he knew that blessing was too much. He said, God, so let's talk about my future because I know that a, a man is a failure until he has a successor. You are now beginning to speak generational. Where is the child? And God says, ah, who is this man that, ha that has my mind? That's how to do business with God. You have so aligned, you understand the language of God. Look at what Solomon did. When it came to Solomon, Solomon said, Lord, give me an understanding heart. I am little. Let me lead your people. He knew where to touch God. Ah, God said, you didn't ask for the life of your enemies. Gave him riches, wealth, and honor. Gave him. You see why Solomon was blessed? He had understanding. Understanding. It was an impartation. Just one mystery I've shared with you. Do you know if you hold on to this mystery, this law of honor, this year alone, you will get more results than many people get in their lifetime. I promise you. Just this law. Just this law. Just this law. Something you are ignoring is allowing tragedies to continue in your life. Something you are refusing to hear is keeping you bound sister it's not like a man cannot come there is something you are ignoring if you will make that adjustment tonight god will surprise you there are brothers here there are things you are ignoring you don't pay attention to instructions there are people inside and outside you don't approach god with a stubborn heart you approach god with a childlike heart please please koinonia hear me i'm about to pray for you for heaven's sake believe the things you hear me say i love you too much to mislead you gentiles please give us isaiah 60 again verse 3 this is the year that gentiles should come to your light this is the year it should happen that you see somebody get up and come and meet you i mean gentiles coming to your light they come with their blessings when jesus was born the wise men saw his star they started looking for it with gold frankincense when they looked at jesus they looked at a baby but they were wise enough to know this is not a baby they started bowing down they didn't wait until he became an adult they didn't say let's see let's watch if he becomes a serious man they knew that this guy is the one that was prophesied and they started bowing down if wise men could bow to a baby bow to certain principles and change your life forever hallelujah do you believe what i shared with you tonight please the body of christ is not lacking revelation what we are lacking is understanding and the grace to do
to live by the truth we know he said now that you know these things happy are you if you do them i now see why god constrained me i was to start another series i mean a, an explosive series and god was just constraining me no let the people get this thing otherwise you keep dumping revelation after revelation and you know what i'm doing to you the more i keep giving you revelations without probing your reception a time will come you will be so puffed up of knowledge without any result and it will be dangerous hallelujah saul kai oh my goodness saul's donkey was missing his father kish brothers and sisters hear me there was no hope of finding that donkey i hope you know naturally speaking three days they could not find the donkey and they say you know what let's not waste our time there is a man there is a man this man there is a prophet there is a man of god and they said ah, there's nothing to take to him they were smart enough and the moment they went to the gate at the gates they saw him and he looked at them do you know what he told them he said go and wait for me and i will tell you everything in your heart do you know what is a mountain to you is within the grace of somebody to stamp it for you what looks like a mountain you are there complaining about house rent and god is saying no 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 everybody is growing but there are people who have been graced to trivialize your challenges if you have the eyes to see look at at once they met samuel samuel said i will tell you every he didn't say i will sit down for counseling he said just go up there wait for me i will tell you what is in your heart and when he went there their biggest problem became the smallest he said, I know you came for restoration. Forget about that. That's not the issue. The donkey has been found. Is that a human being? You think that's a human being talking? No, that's a system. It's not a man. It's a system in a human body. The same thing with Melchizedek. You think Melchizedek was just a man? Just a man older than Abraham? How can a man bless a man and, and say possessor of heavens and earth? Can a man bless another man like that? A man that even Christ associated himself with. The Bible says his priesthood is after the order of Melchizedek. Read your Bible and see all these strange men. Elijah, Noah. I've taught you. Do you know what it means for a man to build an ark that is equivalent to three stadiums? Three stadiums. Story building. Three stadiums alone. In hundred years he built it. Is that a normal human being? Made of gopher wood. So you know why he cursed his son. I've told you, he didn't curse his son just because he saw his nakedness. There was something the son saw. It's a mystery. Are we together now? When Jezebel was rising to judge people, Elijah shows up. The Tishbite, the Bible calls him. You think that's a normal human being? He appears again and he appears again in Revelation. What of Enoch, the seventh man from creation? He used to walk among them and one day they didn't find him. Just imagine one day we don't find Aaron. No grave, no nothing. It's after he leaves we may say, ah, so this guy we have been calling Aaron. That's what happened to Jesus when he resurrected. People looked at him and said, my goodness, so it is true. See, when we get to heaven, one of the shock for people is when God shows the, the spiritual content of some of the people that were walking on the earth. Some of us will put our hands on our head. And say, I lived with this guy forever. I, he was my roommate. Yet I didn't have the eyes to see. I was in his church. I was even an usher. There was capacity like this to help me. Look at Gehazi. Foolish man. If you wanted money. If, if you are with a master that blesses somebody and you want money. Is it not to kneel down and beg? Rather than going to lie. You see why he's foolish. Very stupid man. That's why he didn't receive any mantle. A man who can wipe a rich man's story. Wouldn't you just kneel down and say, my father, change my story. And he said, is it not because the Lord has anointed you to be king? Poured oil upon him and say, as you go, you will find two men. They will appear from nowhere. The word created them. Look at how these guys manipulated nature at, their, at the frequency of their will. They were like God. They laughed at Elisha and said, you have bald head. He, he created a bear, a sheep bear. It came out, ate the children and disappeared. 
what kind the bible says in hebrews 11 it said the earth is not worthy of this kind of people you see them walk the earth is not worthy oh no something you are ignoring is destroying your life we are going to pray the purpose of this teaching tonight is to let you know that between you and your mountain is a mystery is a mystery away it can keep that mountain there forever or shatter it i have met people who changed my life in less than 24 hours less than 24 hours less than 24 hours what are you ignoring some of you your family members have ignored you that's why things have not changed they have refused to admit that there is an anointing on your life so every time you step in your neighbors are there benefiting from your grace but they have refused to acknowledge it brothers and sisters although they are your mothers and fathers things will never change until they come into that recognition Please rise up on your feet. This prayer session we're entering, I want you to pray with all your heart. Lift up your hands and thank the Lord for this word tonight. Illumination. The grace that comes, hear me, when men have an understanding the grace that comes when people can honor. Thank you, Lord, for this word. I'd like you to lift your voice and pray and say, Lord, I know that the mountain before me can live. I just don't know how to let it go, but I want it to go in this year. Lift your voice and pray. This mountain standing before me, there is a way out. Pray, lift your ministry, lift your academics, lift your job, lift everything before God. Lord, I know I've been trying and trying and trying. I've been trying, I've done all I know to do. But tonight I admit, I admit, I, just show me, oh God, show me what I need to do. Those outside, make sure you are praying. Jesus brought you here to change your life forever. Light, 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 light. Sika barato soto predege de bele de bos. Saka prata se tele pratika te koshoto prada na bala na bala na bala. Alleluia. Alleluia. I want you to mention every area of your life where you know sincerely that you have not seen results be very sincere with god and say lord there has to be a way out of this lift your voice and pray please take it serious koinonia lord i've not seen the anointing in my life pray lord i'm tired of struggling i lay hands on the sick and nothing happens i've prayed and fasted nothing is happening Lord, my finances. I've read books, but there's something I've not seen. It's just not changing. No matter what I do, I know something is wrong. Lord, favor. I've not caught the mystery of favor. Everybody hates me. Everybody runs away from me. Even those who want to help me change their minds. Something must be wrong somewhere. I admit tonight that I need help. Lord, I pray for my academic. It's been from one tragedy to another. There, there's got to be a way out. 
Alleluia. Alleluia. Listen, we are still praying. I like you to pray and say, Lord, I make a vow before you. I'm on a strategic project to eradicate ignorance and confusion in my life. In strategic areas, I ask for grace. I ask for grace. Pray. Grace. Lord, I will sit down with this issue of finances and resolve it once and for all. I will sit with this issue of powerlessness, this issue of lack of church growth, this issue of not having a message to preach, this issue of failure all around. Abarato soto prendege de balarabos, rakata baradabas. Come on, be angry with the challenges in your life and pray. Pray, pray. I was studying. I wanted to find out the secret of church growth. I've heard people say it. I've listened to them. I couldn't quite get the light they got. And one time I was praying. And the Spirit of God took me to Mark 1, 2, 3. And it was like an anointing that came. I knew I had gotten it. I knew I had gotten it. When people talk about prosperity, most of the scriptures, Deuteronomy 8, 18, I've not gotten light from that scripture. God, and God will take you through that word to somewhere else. That becomes your access point out. Are we together? Two more prayer points. You're going to pray and say, Lord, every principle I have ignored that is responsible for where I am now, I receive grace to make amendments. Go ahead and pray. Many of us have ignored the law of honor. You have not discerned the body. Lord, I cry for grace tonight. Every principle that should have opened a door for me, I ignored it out of pride. I ignored it out of ignorance. I, I ignored it out of complacency and laziness. Tonight, oh God, I cry. Tonight, oh God, I cry. Pray, pray. Hallelujah. He said, I commend you. I commend you to the word of his grace. He said, He's able to make you wise and to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified you have ignored the word and you've gone around looking for things that only the word can give or you have been in close touch with the word but just growing in knowledge without revelation revelation is not knowing what scripture has said revelation is knowing how to make it work in your life that's revelation god said it's not revelation it's prophecy it takes understanding to convert prophecy into manifestation. God said is prophecy, not revelation. Revelation is where you have caught the mystery of translating that prophecy into a into a, a manifestation in your life. Many of us are carrying God said wonderful, but prophecy has a dynamics to its manifestation. There is a there is an alignment. There is a path you have to play. Please pray again and say, Lord, what have I ignored that is responsible for where I am? Open my eyes. I will make amends. I will make amends in the name of Jesus Christ. Pray. 
ke parot staban dia karaba da balaba e prako soto pras ke baria da balaba raka parado soto preshe pereke telebos haleluya listen i'm about to pray for you do you know that there is a relationship between soul winning and answered prayer are we together mm. this is just one mystery that can explain the reason why many of us are not getting results in prayer there is a direct relationship between saving souls genuinely and answered prayers a man can save souls and walk his way into unending breakthrough just like that the bible says in daniel chapter 12 right when you read from verse 3 there about it says they that be wise will shine like the firmament and they that turn many to righteousness as the stars even forevermore that's a mystery that any man who is committed to turning men to righteousness must shine as the stars he said he that winneth souls is wise and solomon speaking of wisdom said with me are riches wealth and honor yea durable riches and righteousness he said by me kings reign and princes decree justice just for winning souls you are entitled for a baptism of wisdom and many of us want to be wise we want to do all of that and you watch sinners go to hell you are coming for meeting and you watch people around you are not passionate you are embarrassed the bible says he that is ashamed of me before men i will be ashamed of him before my father not on the last day he is before the father making advocacy for you he says i will be ashamed of him before my father are we together now say lord I receive grace to be doggedly involved in anywhere your heart is. Many of us don't know that the key to get God's heart is be involved where his heart is. God is in the business of making sure many come to righteousness. You can't stand in your camp alone and say, God, come and give me tea. Come and give me bread. And God is saying the time is running out. There are people going to hell. This is the direction I'm facing. If you want me to see you, turn around and come here. Don't just stand behind there. Lift your voice and pray and say, Lord, let, let me run at your heartbeat. Let me run at your heartbeat. Let me be involved in what you are involved in. Not just my own agenda. Let me be involved in what you are involved in. Souls. Souls transform. Souls genuinely saved. Souls established in righteousness. Hallelujah. Listen. Please be committed to soul winning. Not just preaching to people be committed and bring them to the house of God to be established do this for just one month and you will see breakthroughs that will surprise you believe me when I tell you this there are people who will never opt to be born again they are uninterested in anything that has to do with salvation they are not interested in God but they are interested in every other thing aside from salvation they want the healing power that comes with the kingdom they want the fame, the increase, the speed. They want the revelation. Everything that can come, they desire. But that encounter with the Son of the Living God is something that um, even ministers are uninterested, really. They just want the charismatism. And the reason is there is an explanation. Because we are humans, we walk with our senses. And the things that we see and experience is what we can relate with. Are we together? And whoever is the face behind that will have all kinds of benefits, financial benefits, benefits of fame and influence and loyalty, etc. So it is, it is more rewarding physically.
to ignore the pursuit of the knowledge of Christ and pursue the manifestation of power and miracles. If someone throws his crutches with blind eyes, is open. If a deaf ear opens, I mean, that news will spread far. If you say someone was saved, you say, well, glory to God as usual. But what really happened? What people mean, I mean, what is the wow factor in the meeting? We must be spiritual enough to value the power of becoming like Christ. We must be spiritual enough to see the all-surpassing superiority that that pursuit provides. Above and beyond getting things, it is God's desire that our lives become a reflection of Christ. Knowing God and having a personal walk with God is our highest priority. Write it down, please. Knowing God and having a personal walk with God is the believer's highest pursuit. Our highest priority is not to end the family crisis. Please listen. If you are not listening to me, it's a sign that the devil is distracting you because what I'm saying is very important. You will receive the miracles. You will receive the signs, the wonders, the miracles, the breakthrough. This is for sure. But knowing God and having a personal walk with God is our highest priority. Our highest priority. So while I receive the miracle, the job, the breakthrough, the blind eyes opening, the deaf ears opening, speed coming into my life, restoration happening, decades of barrenness vanishing overnight, infirmities and diseases living just like that more than those things please listen to me the real value is that they now take away the hindrances that can distract my pursuit of knowing god are we together why do we hate poverty not because poverty um we hate the role it plays in limiting your knowing God and becoming like him. Why? Because it takes time to know God. It takes time to understand his ways. And that same time it takes to know God is what the world demands of you to be able to give you financial stipends. So there is a conflict. You have your time it can be used to know god or it can be used to pursue wealth all through your lifetime this is why we hate poverty and then because every time you are serving the lord caesar will come i've taught you this and demand tribute when you focus to worship god caesar will come and if the way to be a peacemaker in the earth is a formula give to caesar what belongs to caesar and give to god while you worship god keep caesar's coin because he's coming when he comes give him his coin and caesar will go and you keep worshiping god but the moment you cannot give caesar's tribute you will have to forego your worshiping god to labor to find his coin and give to him caesar distracted jesus and distracted his service jesus said okay peter you have to go fishing you were supposed to be listening to me but now that Caesar has come, because it's a law, we have to break this transmission of worship. And sometimes it's not ours, it's your lifetime. Are you getting it now? So by the time I prophesy financial favor or I teach you on the principles of finance, it's not just for money's sake. It is to be able to keep Caesar's gold. And when Caesar knocks the door, you say, carry it, please. I'm focusing on God and destiny. Your tribute is there for you. The disturbance of Caesar is a terrible strategy to take you away from God. Caesar will come as your child's school fees. It will come as all kinds of wicked bills growing geometrically. So to be a peacemaker is to sustain the intelligence and the ability to give to Caesar 
what belongs to Caesar and then give to God what belongs to God. Why do we expose people to the power of God to lift? What is there about lifting? Because you cannot make impact when you are in the pit. When Joseph was in the well, he remained there. We don't know what he was doing down there. But one thing we know is that he was not making any impact. He was alone when he was brought out and honored in the palace. When he was there, he was able to salvage his brothers. Why do we have to prophesy speed? Are we together? The reason is because our, the unit of destiny is time. Please listen very carefully. Whatever eats your time has eaten a portion of your life. Many of us got born again late already. You dedicated a major chunk of your life to ignorance and to the service of the devil. And now that you are born again, there is still the law of process. And if you are to follow the law of process in its normal course, you will never have the time to know God and serve. So God will have to introduce, I call them systems of advantage. He will bring them into the equation of your destiny to restore time. So that in one year, God can put 10 years inside one year. And then now he can allow you to make progress. Are we together? A woman who has been barren for 10 years already she, she would have had maybe three children at least well spaced and happy even if she has one child she's making progress but restoration has not yet happened to her but when God gives that woman triplets he didn't give her children he took time and brought it back nine months and an experience that was to span nine years he brought it in nine months are we together so i want you to see every miracle and everything that happens to you with respect to its contribution or its inhibition to your knowing god and pursuing him if you remain poor like many people have chosen to the challenge there is that they will not know God and they will stop others from knowing God. If you remain weak and you are not strong, the challenge is one day your body will not be able to host the spirit again and it will leave. Because there is a requisite health condition for the spirit to be able to stay in this body. Your body is your passport to function in this realm. Not your passport to be alive. You don't need the body to be alive, but you need the body to be authorized to function in this dimension of God's kingdom. This is the reason why we agree with people that demonic sicknesses like cancer, like HIV, and all these sicknesses that don't have names, but have symptoms and the pain that they bring. When we agree for people to be touched, it's not just showing that a man of God is anointed. Is a way of saying God is interested in your longevity. God is interested in you serving him. Because those things are dead sentences. Hallelujah. Are we together? So I want you to see everything that you will receive tonight with respect to its contribution. When you see someone getting healed or getting delivered, don't look at the rowdiness of the process. Rejoice with that person because something is happening to that person that will grant him or her the ease to serve God now. Are we together now? Our messages must be central and eventually. Remember the formula in, in the days of Moses. There were serpents, but there was a brazen serpent that was lifted. And that the condition was that if you set your gaze on that one, you will survive this one. In any case, you must look at the serpent. You can choose to look at the one that is on the ground there or look at the one lifted. Are we together now? And that anyone who stayed there, ignoring all of these things and stayed there, that person was saved. Healing is pointless if it does not lead to Christ. Deliverance is pointless if it does not lead to Christ. Prosperity, a job, increase, 
all kinds of miracles they are pointless if they do not lead to Christ so it's important for every one of us to get this number two the second thing I would say tonight is the fallacy listen carefully we must conquer the fallacy of trying to do what we have not become the futility of attempting to live out a lifestyle that has not been captured in our paradigm and our mindsets listen very carefully it is futile to attempt to do things any lifestyle that your mindset cannot host is not yours this is very powerful listen to my teaching the mystery of deliverance i call it deliverance through transformation many believers listen to me very carefully now there are people who do not believe that the idea and the concept of deliverance even exist it does it truly does the only balance is that casting out a spirit or an influence as i always teach is not the end of it now please we need africa we need to hear this because um we many people do not want to go through the labor that brings transformation so that our experiences now reflect what the word of god says i can cast out a spirit out of a man the influences can leave you spirits not only stay in men a spirit can stay in a business a spirit can stay in your it doesn't have to be in and around the faculties of man mm -mm. man is their most preferred habitation but not the only habitation spirits can stay in a business they can stay anywhere anything that can have a material expression can be home to spirits they can stay in a challenge a challenge can be a body and a spirit stays there are we together now now but praying and setting you free from the influence of that spirit is only part one of your true freedom the other part is that you must be transformed please say transformed when jesus was given what we would know to be his manifesto the messianic prophecy isaiah 61 and then luke chapter 4 he said the spirit of the lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach glad tidings listen carefully to the meek he had sent me to bind up the brokenhearted. are we together and then he said to set the captives free he had sent me to proclaim one of the versions who say proclaim deliverance there is a dimension of deliverance that is not conducted it is through the accurate dispensing of the word of god that means that your understanding must become fruitful to that dimension then your lifestyle follows suit are we together now it is futile to try to do things any experience you want to live out that has not been captured as a reality in your thinking believers a major part of our growth is in the realm of the mind you have to know this it's unfortunate that many people criticize any effort to transform the mind to meticulously mentor believers into understanding usually they think it is weakness a major part of the ministry of jesus was dedicated in mentorship in fact he did not finish the curriculum when he resurrected he called all of them to the lecture and for 40 days he needed to tidy up some things before he would leave their growth happened principally through his the mentorship of the word he started in matthew chapter 5 the beatitudes teaching them the ways of the kingdom this is how we function in this kingdom when they embraced it then they now made room to be empowered by the spirit that means the ministry of the holy spirit will look almost useless in the life of a believer who does not contend for transformation there is a dimension of his spirit that brings us to that transformation 
But the richer part of the ministry of the Holy Spirit is seen when we are transformed, not before we are transformed. The primary role of the Holy Spirit before our transformation is to guide us into the body of truth, allocated to construct our understanding so that we reign. That's his primary assignment. And then to convict and so on and so forth. The richness of his ministry, the potentials of a man's receiving the Holy Spirit is experienced first by him and then by his territory only when he's transformed that means if we are not transformed we will shortchange the potentials of the life and the ministry of the holy spirit as can be seen in us most people think when the holy spirit comes he just continues to transform you and then that's no 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 transformation has an end are we together now that means you should be able to attain onto a level of commendable maturity where the holy spirit says now we can do business together you have risen to a realm where i can freely manipulate your faculties to the degree to which they will allow me to express myself richly transformation is powerful many believers will not contend for transformation and there is a consequence if you do not contend for transformation the 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 consequence is that you will return back to the circle of exorcism casting out devils temporary liberty casting out devils temporary liberty casting out devils temporary liberty remember that the spirits don't need to only come see listen let me tell you come um dr mecca look at this this gentleman can i can speak over his life prophetically watch this and within the space of two three days even one day this man can receive a million naira two million naira now he has not prospered that blessing is to help him to be able to solve the needs that press him so that he can learn the ways that prosper men because the devil is not afraid of the money he's held the money is not in his mind so he, he is not his own it was a loan that was given to him prophetically it becomes his when the money is in his mind so he can hold on to that and say ah apostle is powerful and after two months the the futility of his understanding will abort that miracle are we together now because he does not know the ways of god allocated for the increase and the sustenance of resources inevitably no matter how careful he uses that he uses that money it must finish and must leave him it's not an attack is the law i've taught you because his growth does not allow this kind of result prophecy routed a way of bringing it to help him fast but because transformation was not there it must leave him now when it leaves him he will come back again and say apostle I brought 10,000 like that day. And I will still speak. I will say now in the name of Jesus, may God bless you. This time around, it doesn't matter how much comes. It's still the same thing. Whether it's 100,000 or 10 million, he's still in trouble. He's not free. Are we together now? So it is true that the spirit of poverty can be around this man's business, this man's life, and so on and so forth. I'm just using this as an example now after i take authority over that spirit the bible says when a spirit leaves a man it goes through dry regions looking for a safe place a place of habitation not finding any the spirit will advise itself i will arise like the prodigal son and return back to my house he's still calling the man that means you remain just because a spirit leaves you or leaves your business does not mean you are free it finds the house swept clean but empty and then the bible says it gathers seven others jesus is teaching here now that means this is how the realm of the spirit works and returns back to that man so that the latter state of that man is even worse than the former and because of his ignorance he will say the man of god is fake the man of god is not fake you are not transformed to sustain the miracle are you getting where the ignorance of believers come from at least you were in a you, you you had a house 
after the breakthrough now you don't even have a house again and you say ah i don't know what kind of a reverse anointing works in this church or in this ministry or somewhere no 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 not at all not at all but now imagine with me that god steps in over dr emeka's life are we together and then the lord blesses him still using the finance that that, that i'm giving an illustration around and this guy now god blesses him and he decides to say now that at least one million has come my destiny is bigger than one million but one million can quickly help me pay maybe my rent are we together and just sort out my children now i can even if i can't pay everything i can pay first step i can rest while he's doing that he now subjects himself and said you know what i want to find out god's ways the ways are located for the prosperity of the saints and he begins to gather these teachings while he's listening do you know what he's doing he's closing the door this guy is prospering not when he's doing business when he is fortifying his mindset so that the possibility for that spirit to come in does not exist again to preach deliverance to the captives many believers continue to hop from prayer house to prayer house now I'm, I'm not being sarcastic i would not do that from church to church from apostle to apostle prophet to prophet pastor to pastor in need of what only transformation can sustainably bring are we together now yes we will prefer to do all kinds and all manner of prayer than to settle down and say something is wrong notice no matter what job this guy gets by prophecy he loses it through ignorance prophecy brings it ignorance when the devil marks that you have this stronghold he will no longer fight the prayer that is coming this is how satan mocks many men of god across africa before they pray the demon leaves joyfully because he knows he will come back he studies the mindset and finds out that it has become a stronghold the door has been opened and has been hinged to something to keep that door open. And the spirit says, I can stroll around. The service will soon finish. And I will route through just one door of ignorance. And I'm back to the life, back to the business. Are we together? Very, very powerful. So this gentleman, as he's transformed, something is happening to him. You will find out prophecy. Now You will see the potential of the prophecy or the prayer or the deliverance as you would call it it will show in his transformation so he can return and say 10 years ago watch this once upon a time i was poor or i was weak or i was under all kinds of yokes and all of that then a day came when that spirit or that influence over my life was addressed by the power of god comma and then I subjected myself to a season to learn the ways of God and the Holy Ghost. The more I expanded my spiritual capacity, the more his potential, the richness of his anointing and his presence manifested through me. Now look at my life. I'm a testimony from here to here. I never want this place to just become a place of miracles. There's a service, so let's go. You'll be healed. You'll be blessed. I agree. But I, I disagree that you'll be sustainably blessed, sustainably healed, sustainably lifted, except that in addition to the prayer and that which you will receive tonight, you must contend for knowledge. This kingdom is knowledge-based. And not any kind of knowledge. You are not at liberty to choose what you want to hear. No, there is a body of truth already allocated. You are not given the luxury of inventing what you want. It may not be comfortable to your, your status quo or whatever church or whatever teaches you. Listen, you must submit yourself to the whole counsel of God, not the one that looks pleasant to you doctrinally speaking if you want to stand balanced and to receive the victory to walk in the fullness of the victorious life then you must submit yourself to the body of truth allocated to bring you results 
imagine with me for instance that this were a student and then a lecturer is teaching and he says i don't like this course maybe a medical you're a doctor so imagine a very difficult medical course and then he's saying i don't like this one i like this one now you already know that this guy is in trouble there is a reason why he's taught that as uncomfortable as this you have to love your future as a doctor more than the pain to settle down and say I, I may not like it it doesn't i mean who would want to touch a cadaver who would want to walk with a dead body who would want to keep giving people injections all around i mean these guys just inject people and do all kinds of things who would want to do that but you have to do it that's the only way the uh, what the, what's inside that the um drug will get into your body there's no Bluetooth for it. It has to go directly. <laughs> Are we together? So, this guy may look cruel while he's giving you that injection. You have to choose health or to just have a temporal comfort. And you endure the thing and receive it for a few days. And after that, you are fine. This is it. It's amazing that the believers that choose what to believe that means that um, by, let me explain what I mean the believers that sit down and select what to believe according to the comfort it provides are the people who don't have results isn't it funny that believers who do not have results are the ones who sit down and choose and say no 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 um, I don't like this I like this I don't like this it's pride the Bible says when you are ready to receive, there is a quality that is required. It's called meekness. That you receive with meekness the engrafted word. You must embrace the whole counsel of God to experience all of God. Are we learning? What I'm sharing with you is very powerful. This is what will give value to the prayers that we'll have. You know, Africa, we like prayer. And prayer is good. But visionless prayer that is not seen as one of the keys that connects to other keys will only continue to be a dissipation of energy flattery in religion and will never produce results the value of prayer is in the role that it plays while other kingdom principles are kept Prayer does not just work generically, regardless of your obeying other principles. It's why we continue to dissipate spiritual energy and convince ourselves that based on the pain that comes in prayer, God must be answering. Spiritual things are interconnected and the entire system must be healthy for you to experience all of God. If you choose a dimension and leave the rest. So we have people who are always praying. Always delivering something. Always casting out demons. Now please, I, I, I don't say it with, with, a, with a heart of sarcasm at all. Don't, don't find offense in any way. This way, you will never become a portrait of the victory of Christ. It will never truly happen. It was never supposed to be an endless pursuit forever. What then is the excellency of the finished work of Christ? Then on the other hand, we have those who continue to flatter themselves that just by default they are free. Oh boy. And their lives continue to show that this is not correct. When they are sick, they don't say Christ paid for my sickness. They go to the pharmacy and then they believe that every other thing is all right. The possibility of sickness, the possibility of defeat, no matter how temporal, is already a clue that victory is established in Christ from the prophetic standpoint. But it takes your engaging with God to make it manifest. And people stop here and continue to flatter themselves that they are free until they head to the grave. Are we together? I shall not die. You are deteriorating. No, no, God forbid. I know that I'm fine. You are going down. You are having all kinds of dreams and nightmares. You finish praying immediately and lie down. The spirit says, he's asleep now. Let's continue. And you get up and say, I didn't see anything. You are joking there. Until they kill you in the spirit and you wake up and die physically back again. There is something called the death of a fool. It is the death that comes 
as a result of assumption and pride and ignorance. We must embrace the whole counsel of Christ. If you did not prosper by default, then you will not stay healthy by default. You will not stay delivered by default. It has to be engaged through growth. They are stabilizers. They provide the dimensions of your stability. If you're with me, say amen. amen. This is the second thing we must learn because I, I, I continue to get tired of believers again and again. It is this, if this kind of teaching does not come, the danger is that you, the man of God, who is always doing the deliverance, you are in trouble. Number one, you will be idolized. And that is not healthy for you. Are we together? Number two, you will be weary. Because even if you delegate someone and say, pray for them, they'll say, I've gone. You do your own prayer again. And you will continue. These people will wear you out. You must know the truth and know it enough to set you free. Are we blessed? I wrote something down here. Our spiritual efficiency as far as living in victory and advancing the cause of the kingdom is concerned will require specific knowledge of the ways, the principles, the methodologies of the kingdom. Praise the Lord. I think there was a time a gentleman sent me a very funny text. I know that he was just, a, I don't know if he was a, a, a male, female, or he just sent me a text and said, Apostle, God has called you to be an apostle to preach Christ crucified, not principles and not systems and strategies. I started interceding for the guy because his, his life will be a compendium of pain. I guarantee you. You see, time is a revealer. And it's terrible to carry so many people in your ignorance only to find out after many decades that you're in trouble. There is a dimension of Jesus called Jesus the way. Jesus the way. Jesus did not just say, I am life. He said, I am the way. A methodology. It is still Jesus. This man who was proposing that believed that for whatever reason, that the teaching of the principles of the kingdom would veer people away from Christ. If it's not taught with balance, if it's taught as an end to itself and not a means to an end. I didn't even reply. I just felt I love the person. Who knows? Maybe the person is following today. I just hope that the person has grown. Because this kind of copycat pride is what is responsible for the eventual pain of many people. Where a man of God will stand and not know what to believe again. Your ignorance has been represented in every dimension. And now you stand and wonder, what do I do? You must be men and women of conviction based on the truth of God's word. Listen, if you do not know the ways of God, the primary way that we know God is through scripture. The second way we know God is through the names of God. The third way we know God is through the person of Jesus. Jesus, the Bible calls him the, the, the express image of the invisible God. And the last way we know God is through experience. There are not many other ways. These are the ways allocated. And that from a child, thou hast known the Holy Scripture that is able to make you wise unto salvation. It takes wisdom to see the potentials of salvation in your life. It says that you draw with joy out of the wells of salvation. When you know God and encounter him, he will expose you to his ways. It is the knowledge of his ways that brings beauty and glory to your Christian life. Are we together? Two scriptures and then we'll pray. Thank you, Megan. Exodus chapter 6. To our business for the night now. Exodus chapter 6. From verse 6 to 7. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. Wherefore, say unto the children of Israel, 
I am the Lord and I will bring you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians. I will read you out of their bondage and I will redeem you with a stretched out arm and with great judgments. Seven. And I will take you to me for a people and I will be to you a God and ye shall know that I am the Lord your God. How do you know? By the mighty act. There is an experience that I will give you that will cause you and validate to you again that I am the Lord your God, which bringeth you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians. Psalm 34 and verse 19. Please look up. It is not the best of God that believers are challenged. However, it is also not unusual in the economy of God that believers are challenged. Listen very carefully. It, while it is true that it is not a, the best reflection of the Zoe life, if and when believers are challenged in any aspect of their life, it is the flawlessness, the dexterity, the ease of their lives show the multifaceted dimensions of God. However, because the treasure is in earthen vessels, it is also not unusual Please listen carefully and deliver yourself from the ignorance that people continue to propose that make believers feel guilty for being challenged. God, in his dealings with men, knew that there will always be room here and there. Are we together? For the devil to seem to find a place and negate the reality of the victory of Christ. And so God allocated all kinds of systems so that if for any reason as a believer you find yourself in a predicament that is not consistent with what the Bible says should befit you when you are a partaker of eternal life, you don't feel bad. You can now begin to engage the systems allocated. Here's what the Bible says. Many are the afflictions, not of a man. Many are the afflictions of the righteous not a righteous the righteous many are the afflictions of the righteous not the affliction of sinners there is something called the affliction of the righteous now it doesn't really matter how it came the most important thing is that it is there and that there is a provision next um, it says but the Lord this is your advantage Many are the afflictions of an unbeliever, but he will remain there because he does not have the Lord as his anchor. But many are the afflictions of the righteous. The advantage of the righteous in affliction is that he has the Lord who can deliver him out of them all. Out of them all. So the embarrassment is not the challenge. Listen, believers. Stop allowing challenges to make you feel I'm not a Christian. Maybe it's because I did not pray. No, no, not at all. Not at all. The Bible tells us that many are the afflictions. So it is not unusual when your prayer request is almost a notebook. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. It says, but the Lord delivered him. So God is a deliverer. He delivers. He delivers him. What is deliverance? I've taught you. Deliverance doesn't just have to do with spirits. No. It's the parting away. Separation between you and the obstacles that impede your progress. It's called deliverance. The moment a platform is created where there is a separation between you and the influences that impede your progress. Be it demonic be it mental, be it physical, in whatever variation and fashion it comes. The Lord delivered him out of them all. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. So it is possible that a pastor can have his children go haywire. And while that is happening, rent issues, financial issues, while that is happening, maybe his spiritual life is going down, while that is happening, and he sits and feels bad, and some ignorant believer comes and says, oh dear, it's just because you don't know God, your life. No, 
No, the Bible says many are the afflictions of the righteous. But when you remain there, then you agree with that situation that the victory of Christ is a lie. That means when you find yourself in that situation, the revelation of the fact that the Lord can bring you out should not allow you to sit there comfort, um, comfortable. Are we together? Don't find comfort in that situation. You get up and begin to press. The woman with the issue of blood knew. She understood that she was a daughter of Abraham. The one who was took, uh, you know, bound, she did not know. But this one knew. So she could not heal herself, but she was already rehearsing. Oh, Jesus should come around this place. As soon as Jesus came, she knew already. She pressed and touched the helm of his garment. Never become comfortable. When your life is yet to reflect the full potentials of that which comes with the life of God, the victorious life. Your assignment as a believer is to continue to scan through every area of your life. To give thanks over the areas that are now reflecting in experience and in reality the victory of Christ. But then to write down and begin to deal decisively with the areas that are yet to confirm to the the reality of the victory of Christ I love Naaman the Bible says Naaman was the captain of the Syrian army he says he was a very valiant man so in one aspect of his life he was doing exceptionally well then the Bible says but he was leprous and I'm sure Naaman just said oh at least I'm a captain it's all right I can live my life like that but a little slave girl came to plant dissatisfaction she said oh that my Lord would listen to me paraphrasing there is a prophet that you can go to in Israel and you go to that prophet and this other side of your life will also come and you know come under alignment and he dragged himself there long story short at the end of it the Bible says he became his body became as fresh as that of a child don't be ashamed of your challenges and your pain but don't be comfortable with them either you should be doing something, praying about it, reading about it. There's, there has, if you are at ease, when things are not going well, it's a sign that you are not a serious believer. It is true that you don't have the power as it were to, to minister healing to yourself. But you should sit down and say, look, where do you know that God is moving? where do you know this situation i may not have the power to change it but i know that this is not how a home should look like we are up today down tomorrow i have read in the bible that there is favor but i must sincerely admit that i've not seen it reflect in experience i will continue to confess favor i will never speak negatively but then i will partner with god in pursuit of the graces the places the dimensions that will make this become my experience that's how we walk in victory. Now, thanks be to God, which causes us always to triumph. Are we together? And so this, this gentleman now, he knows that this is what the Bible has said about his life. That you shall be the head and not the tail. He's born again. He's believed it. But he's becoming the tail almost forever. And then he goes to read. There has to be something wrong. He doesn't know what is wrong. But his dissatisfaction is attracting the spirit of wisdom. You see that now. He does not know what to do. But one thing he knows is that his life is not yet a reflection of the word of God. Listen, my brothers and my sisters, the excellency of your knowing God is tested when you insist that your life becomes a reflection. That insistence is what the Bible calls faith. It is not the wishing your insistence to see to it i know i don't have a child now no problem i will not kill myself many are the afflictions so there's no embarrassment you can say whatever you want to say ah call me a barren well men are not uh, barren woman are we together impotent man whatever you want to call no problem however i've read in my bible that he can make the barren to become a joyful mother so i will not just conclude and say well god one day no 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 in your quietness you say lord 
just because I said thank you for my condition does not mean I will keep quiet. I'm thanking you because the Bible says, listen, the Bible says in everything gives thanks. It's a law. It has nothing to do with results. I give thanks out of obedience, but I insist out of faith. Please sit down and learn what will give value to a miracle service tonight. So that you will walk out of this place enlightened. These pockets of gaps and imbalances, why believers continue to mock themselves. You insist. And your insistence is luring the spirit of wisdom. Did the Bible not say through desire, Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 1, through desire, a man having separated himself, he says that he seeketh and intermeddled with all wisdom. As your desire begins to grow, there has to be a way. We can't be begging in this family. My father is a pastor, we are still begging. My mother is an intercessor, we are still begging. My brother is a banker, he's looking like a, like a, a farmer. He's looking like somebody who, who, who just parts death on the road. There has to be a way out. I don't know the way, but I know there is a way. You see it now. Ah. Oh, oh, oh. My lifting has come assignment listen your assignment as a believer is to keep looking at your life and looking at scripture and record what is not matching let that become your project no matter listen 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 in as much as you don't feel bad for where you are you also don't feel good for where you are you have to find a way of growing yourself into the dimension of you that becomes the full expression of the life and the power of God. So a believer who is at ease is a foolish believer because there is a lot of conformity to be done. You may be good in your prayer life, but your finances is, is rubbishing the other part of your, your Christian life. So you must stay and say, thank you Lord for the one I've seen, but show me the one I've not seen. That's why the Bible says meekness. Because you see, let me tell you this. When you have result in one area of your life, usually you would deceive yourself into believing that one result covers for everywhere. No, you have to approach every aspect of the kingdom life uniquely. That you're a prayer warrior doesn't mean you are prosperous. That you are prosperous does not mean you have character. You have to approach these dimensions per dimension. Until every one of it, and let me tell you this. The more you conform and receive results, the more Christ can be seen through you. People look at your life and they can see the completeness. They know that this is how a believer should look like. If you see me limping, I'm a human being. Human beings can limp. There is nothing to be ashamed of. The best. Are we together now? If you see me hungry and I'm not fasting, glory be to God, I'm still alive. But that's not God's best for me. Because if I'm hungry, continually I will die. Are we together? Hunger can kill. It doesn't kill in one day. But eventually. Poverty will not destroy you in one day. But you continue. The day your children can no longer go to school. You will be surprised at what you will do for money. It's true that you can say, look, we don't need a crowd. Even if it's five people, the most important thing is we are doing well. Excellent. After 10 years of five people, you will see whether you will remain in ministry or not. It is in the multitude of men that is a king's honor. Are we together? 
So tonight, listen to me. Listen to me very carefully. Tonight is a prayer of addition. Lord, thank you for this, but this area of my life, Lord, you've not visited it yet. And I'm, I'm, I give thanks, but I came for this miracle service thanking you for the one you did March, April, but also admitting that my life is not yet in experience, a reflection of all that should be. Is someone ready to pray? Lift your voice in one minute and cry to the God of heaven. It is not unusual for believers to be afflicted. But to remain at ease in the presence of affliction is a sign of insensitivity and a sign that you do not know the counsel of God. Let God be true. Let God be true. And every man a liar. Let God be true. And every condition a liar. Please pray. We are still praying. Let God be true. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now listen. Listen. Please hear me. In fact, I will, I will media, if you can do a podcast of this charge uh, and put it separately, I think people will be blessed hearing it. This thing you just had is real deliverance for someone because it's explaining to you why the devil is not afraid of you no fortification that comes through knowledge hear me please tonight is not a night to be ashamed lord i thank you for this but mention the areas that are not yet there and be sincere Listen, let me tell you. Listen, listen to me. Listen to me. Listen to me. The Bible says, as I hear you declare before my ears, not as you wish, there is nothing to be ashamed of. Are we together now? When you come before God, this is like a threshing floor. When you go to an injection room with the doctor, if they say turn and receive injection, you don't say, ah, doctor. No, 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 no. no. That's, that's not his business. The doctor is free. You are the one who is in trouble. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Listen to me. If there is any aspect of your life that is not yet reflecting the reality of the Christ life, don't feel bad. Don't let it tear down what God has done. Give thanks for the one he has done. But release your faith and say, Lord, I know there is more. And I'm here tonight as a token of my insistence that my life must become a perfect reflection of all the possibilities that are resident in the Christ. Someone pray. Please lift your voice and pray. Shikaparuta salabradigini. Hallelujah. Psalm 34 and verse 17. Psalm 34 and verse 17. God will only arise to separate you from the hindrances that impede your progress in life when you call. The righteous, the same righteous, many are the afflictions of the righteous. And the Lord delivers that righteous, but it does not come by default. That same righteous, the righteous must have to cry and say, Lord, I know that many are my afflictions. I give you thanks in pain, but bring me out of pain. Bring me out of pain. Lift your voice and cry. Please lift your voice and pray. Pray like a priest. Pray like one who is tired of this dimension. Yes. 
separate me tonight, oh God. Separate me from the influences that impede my progress, that impede the fullness of my destiny in Christ. You reign, you reign, Elohim. Chapter 21, verse 1 and 2. Praise the Lord. We are going to pray. Genesis chapter 21, from verse 1 and 2. And the Lord visited Sarah as he said. There was a day he said it but did not do it. There was a day the prophecy was still in motion. Now the time came when what God said. He now did. And the Lord visited Sarah as he had said. And the Lord did unto Sarah as he had spoken. Verse 2. And Sarah conceived. This is the proof that God visited her. Something happened in her life that did not happen before. Something happened in her destiny. There has to be proof of something today that was not there yesterday. Lord, visit me tonight. Lift your voice and cry for a visitation. Visit my church. Visit my ministry. Visit my finances. Visit my spiritual life. Is someone pray? And the Lord visited Sarah. And the Lord did unto Sarah. And the Lord visited Joshua Selman. And the Lord did unto Joshua Selman. Sarkin, 
One more prayer point and I'll begin to minister. Please listen. One more prayer point. Listen carefully. He said, tell Pharaoh, let my people go that they may go and serve me. They are not just going out for nothing. Tell Pharaoh, my people need to serve me, but this slavery is a distraction. Tell poverty, my people need to go, but if you don't let, they cannot serve me. Tell failure, tell delay, tell defeat. Hali parus kabaranta katu. Tell a slow place of growth. Tell barrenness. There is a prophet who should have been born. You are stopping the generation from experiencing a prophet. Hallelujah. Now let me give you the last prayer point. Hallelujah. Listen. Anything that will give you the comfort to allow you to reveal Christ and focus on the agenda of God is God's business. The moment you bring his kingdom in the picture, let me tell you, whether you invite it on him or not, it is his business. The key to getting God's attention is to bring Christ into the picture. The moment Christ and the purposes of God is in the picture, God's attention is drawn. What is going on here? When David came to threaten the nation of Israel, it was not a threat. It was, it was not just a threat to a king. It was a threat to a covenant and the continuity of God's program. And he raised David. And David said, Goliath, who is this uncircumcised Philistine? When Haman was plotting to destroy the nation of Israel, God said to kill my people so the Messiah will not come. This is my business now. Let me tell you the truth. Your challenges will remain your business oh, until you bring Christ into the picture. Until you bring the agenda of God. Lord, give me peace so I can serve you. Give me speed so I can serve you. Increase so I can focus. Kabaritata. Shaliz Kabaru Zepediakata. Unto the God that doeth wonders. Lift me, O God, so the nations can see your name and your praise. Let the oil come upon my life. Let the anointing come on my destiny. Mention the area that must reflect Christ in your life. Thank you for this area. But Lord, I arise for this one. I place a demand by faith. I insist by faith. listen please listen to me I want you to be very sensitive the spirit of faith is strong in this place please listen we'll be very fast tonight the real revelation is what you have received now the prayer the miracles and this is something that just comes in one sweep this is the sustaining factor you will marvel and wonder at what begins to happen to your life because these are the things that are bought prophecy if you don't put them in place you are wasting your time it doesn't matter what comes please hear me whether you are outside following online please I want you to listen there is a God that doeth wonders and 
God can arise. You see, the thing with God is, it is the process that takes time. When the word comes, the word is quick, quick, quick. You came with all kinds of prayer requests and you think God will answer them moving one by one. Just one pronunciation and that's the end of it. It's gone. So we're going to be very, very fast. I, I sensed, please listen very carefully. I'm going to pray for people, but I sensed that one of the, the major things that the Lord wants to do tonight is first the healing. You see, every time you see death, death and infirmity go together are we together now so the healing that that healing grace we're trusting god that people who have come with all kinds of devilish oppressions but they must be free and then number two i will continue to pray this until i see it in your life i truly believe listen to me that there is a dimension of favor that the church not just individuals must shift into otherwise forget about the ease to serve the purposes of god this issue of god today money tomorrow god today argument final is, is a is a is a demonic thing you must press for these graces as we pray hallelujah father we have come again you are the God that doeth wonders. The mighty God of heaven, we honor you and we bless you. Thank you for deliverances. Thank you for healings. Thank you for prophecies. Thank you for the manifestation of your power. Lord, let tonight be a remarkable night. Shift people, shift people, shift people away obstacles and hindrances from their lives in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ now we're going please listen we're going to be very fast I already see several manifestations of the angelic in this place now um, for those of you who are coming here for the first time listen take away anxiety just relax there is a God who is mighty it will so shift your life in a way that will surprise you. Are we together now? Praise the Lord. Thank you. Bring the lady under the anointing here. The power of God is coming on one lady here. We have to be very fast now. Just here. I'm seeing a strong anointing of the Holy Ghost. showing me I'm in a vision now and I'm seeing chains people's feet with chains and the Lord is saying this is what has impeded people from making progress you are moving but you are not making progress I'm about to pray for you now please whether you are an usher or not just help the usher so that we are very fast tonight I'm seeing chains I want to pray now in the name that is above all names I declare by the spirit Lord, that anyone here under the sound of my voice, in any of the overflows, inside and outside, bound by darkness, I declare by the power of the Holy Ghost, right now, be free. I cause those chains. I cause those chains. Please bring them out. I decree and declare. Overflow one. I'm seeing such. A mighty deliverance overflow one just overflow one I'm seeing the power of God come we have to be very fast but I'm praying now you're going to shout that name that is above all names listen this deliverance is not just for you alone some of you came and left your family members for years you are still in the same spot you love God but there is no progress I want to pray for you now at the count of three there's such a strong anointing 
in the name of Jesus as you shout that name that name that is above all names I tell you if God be God then any chain holding you and holding your family must give way father in the name of Jesus let there be deliverance right now one two three shout Jesus I cost those chains now in the name of Jesus. Bring them out. Shake the inside and outside. I decree and declare. Be free now. Be free now. Be free now. Please, quickly, 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 let's have them outside. Ushers should know that, please. So that we can hurry up and make progress. Shalibros kabaruda shalakatos kebriandas. Alusha brendegedit. We are still going to pray. I'm seeing fire. This is what I'm seeing. I'm seeing it come on people, not just on chains, feet now. I declare by the power of the Holy Ghost, every overflow, those following online, this shout of the name of Jesus again, I'm seeing families, what looks like a door, under chains, it must leave right now. One, two, three. I command every chain, the Paruta Shikabarakata, chain of darkness, tying down people in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Be free now. I need a chain falling. Yeah. I need a chain falling. I need a chain. I need a chain falling. I need a chain. Now the Lord is that spirit. The Lord is that spirit. The same spirit that delivers, that heals, the Lord is that spirit, not another. It is the same Lord that gives salvation, that heals. The Lord is that spirit. Hallelujah. I want to rebuke barrenness. Now, first physical barrenness. But then this barrenness is more than just physical barrenness. A state of unproductivity. And as I pray this prayer, many ladies prophetically, the power of God will come upon you, not necessarily because you are barren, but women stand as gates in the realm of the spirit. And God uses them to signify the opening of gates. In the name that is above all names, I declare right now, even as the Lord is revealing to me, there are all kinds of barrenness in this place. Physical barrenness, financial barrenness, spiritual barrenness. I declare by the power of the Holy Ghost, at the count of three right now, that anointing is coming on people inside and outside. Those with physical barrenness issues, God is stepping in right now. And those with all kinds of related barrenness issues, God is also stepping in at the count of three. I declare it right now. One, two, three. Let that power touch you right now. I release you. I release you by the power of the Holy Ghost. I release you by prophecy. I release you. Enter a dimension of fruitfulness. I speak it to your life. I speak it to your business. I bless the word upon you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Madam, please stop this woman for me. Madam, please come. Your life is about to change. I don't know who this woman is. Where are you coming from, madam? 
coming from the town. Come again, man. From Sabo, from Sabo. From Sabo, I want to pray for you. Number one, please look at me, madam. The pain you experience at your back, huh? that back pain, the Lord is taking it away. Number Amen. two, Amen. God is stepping into your family. Amen. I'm looking at your family and I'm seeing that Amen. your family needs a real miracle. This is, this is an array of witchcraft. And if we don't pray to take lives, people will die like chickens. But we're going to pray. Now I'm seeing the map of Nigeria and I'm seeing Kogi State. Kogi State. The power of God is coming upon Kogi State right now. Right now I'm speaking. The power of God is a sign and a wonder how God does this, ladies and gentlemen. Kogi State. You see, for those of you who don't know, when God shows me that, the moment I mention the state, everyone who is part of that state, that anointing, will touch them. It's, it's a sign and a wonder. It's a grace. I declare right now, whether you know your state or not, I'm seeing that map and I send the word. I declare by the spirit, let that anointing, I'm seeing fire rising, call this state. Shalis Kobarakatai. Prateka teka toka parukata. Embrekadesha. I command liberty by the spirit of the living God. I command liberty by the power of the Holy Ghost. That every planting that is not of God associated with that territory. I call for liberty now. Now by the spirit. Mama. Please let me pray for you. I'm going to pray for you, ma. And it will be like a dream. The way God will honor you and take away sorrow from your life. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for our mother. Honor this woman. In the name of Jesus Christ. Mama, I declare over you in the name of Jesus. Let everything that looks like shame and reproach and sorrow over you and your family, I cast it out of your life right now. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Jennifer. 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 I'm hearing the name Jennifer. We have to really... Jennifer. Where are you from? Huh? I've seen this thing before and I've announced it in miracle service. There is something called Aleku. You, you understand what I'm saying? I'm seeing that name again. Where are you coming from? Where is she from? State. You are from Benway yes, State. Yes, we have Aleku there. What? Eh? Aleku. This is what I'm saying. Ah! I know you now. I command that devil ah! out of her life now by the power of the Holy Ghost. See, listen, the Bible says, even the captives of the mighty, the lawful captives, shall be delivered. Every challenge is relative to the grace that confronts it. Every challenge relative to the grace that confronts it. My friend, this gentleman, tap him for me. Don't worry, let me talk with him. Look at me. The Lord is going to use you mightily. Huh? I'm stretching my hands now. I'm seeing an anointing coming on you. Number one, the grace for intercession. Amen. Number two, the teaching ministry. Amen. I decree and declare. Amen. May you step into that dimension Amen. in the spirit. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I shift you by prophecy into that dimension in the spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I'm seeing one mama outside, overflow one. The Lord is showing me an elderly woman. It's like you came with your daughter or something. You didn't come alone. Please, if there's such a woman, there come. I'm seeing the Lord is showing me a woman. You came together with your daughter. We have to hurry up because we're going to pray for the sick now. Mighty God. This young lady, look at me, my dear. Shout Jesus as loud as you can. Jesus! That's the end of it. I release you right now from everything that represents captivity. 
in the name of Jesus Christ. Where are you coming from, Mama? I'm from seeing Abuja. hold on. You came by road? Yes, sir. Kaduna, Abuja. Where do you stay? I stay in a where are you from? From part of Niger. It's Abuja? The, yes. Like a boundary. Yes, sir. And that's where you are coming from. Yes, I want to pray for you. The spirit of death will leave your life and your family. Amen. My dear, this is your daughter. Is that lady your daughter? Yes, sir. I'm going to pray because this lady, as young as she's seen, God is going to use her. There is a grace for favor that is on this lady. You see. Favor. Favor. That's your name. No, it's not like I'm doing an impartation. Huh? Your name is what? What's her name? Favor. Hear me, my dear. The Lord is going to turn your life. You see this lady like this? Don't worry about what you are eating or not eating. You hear what I'm saying? This lady, God is going to honor her. The first miracle God is going to do to your daughter is in her brain. Amen. Because this has been your prayer. Eh? Yes, sir. She's yes, not sir. doing very well in At school. All. This, listen now, let me talk to you. This lady is not a bad lady. She loves, she's a serious lady and a very good and disciplined lady. But this is an attack. I will pray for her. She will go back and you will marvel and wonder at what will happen to this lady. My dear, come, favor. Don't cry, eh? You came for miracle service. Father, the Bible declares that the memory of the just is blessed. I bless your mind. Understanding in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. A family of four ladies, the chain of marital delay is breaking now. No, 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 it's, it's not everybody. I'm, I'm praying that this is an exact prayer to someone right now. I'm seeing, I, I just held this lady and the Lord showed me four, one, two, three, four ladies. <laughs> By the power of, please, why are they, don't, please don't bring people out that have not called, please. Why are they here? Huh? Where is she from? Overflow one. Okay, this is your daughter. Come, Mama. Where are you from? Where are you coming from? We are from Quarter Two, sir. You are from Quarter Two. Quarter Two. Yes, sir. I have to pray for you. There's somebody here. When it's time to pray, please, no matter what overflow you are in, um, I want to pray for you by myself. When they look at you, they will think you are pregnant, like very evidently pregnant but you are not pregnant this is i don't know what this is this thing is just protruding like this the power of god is coming on that person and that that demonic thing i curse it by the god of heaven he must let you go now in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus mama can i pray for you in the name of jesus i'm praying for you ma that everything that wants to cut short your life number one i come against it in the name of jesus and then number two i'm praying for you it's time for you to reap from the fruit of your labor in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ who is this why is she here okay jennifer what's wrong with her huh she's not feeling fine Okay, we'll, we'll pray for the sick. Ah, we have to pray. Oh. Is she mad? No. She's just not. Okay. It's, it's before that she was mad, but now it's not like that. She was mad before. Yes. When uh, it has been now uh, one, let's say eight months. Okay. When she came here, so she cannot talk and uh, other like that. She used to. This, this means all the, when she's talking, so she no talk normally. Okay, we'll pray. We're going to minister to the sick. We have to, if not, we'll, we'll take all the night here. But we'll pray for her. Can she hear me? My dear, how are you? You can hear me? Yes. I will pray for you, eh? And Jesus will heal you. Because I'm already seeing this lady inside a coffin. With what I'm seeing, this lady will not cross this year. 
they will just say survive by but there is a God in heaven hallelujah we have to pray I hope they are not just coming out at random do we have huh? I didn't ask them to come out I said protocol you we should be able to walk with the people so that we don't have you are the one come where are you from Paladin Paladin place your hand on your stomach do you believe in Jesus yes, you believe in the power of the Holy Spirit yes, have you gone to the hospital yes, sir. I've done many what did they tell you is there nothing nothing and yet the stomach is growing and you're not pregnant yes, are you married about to sir. about to marry is your husband here yes, sir. husband come where is he the Lord wants to say a big major marital problem now husband sir come thank you eh? please don't be embarrassed we love you God just wants to save you very little things like this can tear marriage not into two into pieces and want to want to help them where are you coming from sir from somewhere it seems like. what are you trusting God for healing sir God provision for the word. Healing and God provision. Provision? Yes, sir. Uh, are you working? No, sir. Did you apply for a job? Yeah, I've been applying, sir. Because I'm looking, the Lord is opening my eyes and I'm seeing a letter. This is why I'm, I'm saying, I don't know. We're going to pray. This is your first time here? No, I've been coming. Okay, been, okay. I will pray for your wife first, eh? Okay. If not, um, I hope I'm not I'm not a prophet of doom, eh? but God is trying to save you from what will make you hate someone you are loving so much now. My dear, you love Jesus. Put your hand there. In the name of Jesus Christ. You, you see how this kind of demonic things are. The stomach is protruding and the machine is not even saying there's fibroid or something. At least if it says there's something, you know what to remove. The machine is showing that this woman is perfectly healthy, yet her stomach is protruding. If you don't understand now, you can put this innocent brother in trouble. You understand what I'm saying? You see how the devil works? Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit, I decree and declare now, watch the power of God. Ah, the power of God. Oh, this, let me tell you, the anointing is very powerful. It's not for showmanship. It's like a drug. Just enters your system and it will rubbish anything that is not God. I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Spirit. Madam, let me tell you the truth. You will not waste even if it's one day to be pregnant when it's time. I'm saying this by the Spirit of God. And this, I'm seeing like a black band tied around your stomach. I lose it right now. And I release you. I set you free from this. In the name of Jesus. My friend, I pray for you. Look at me, sir. You believe in Jesus? The budget I'm seeing is very much. You have not even gone, you have not gone near halfway the budget. Eh? Don't be embarrassed. I'm not embarrassing you. You need a real miracle. This one is not just a destiny helper. You need a miracle. Because with what I'm seeing that you wrote as a budget, hi. When is the wedding? 12th October. 12th of October. God is faithful, eh? I will pray with you. The prophetic dimension of wealth. Truly there is. Father. I pray by the power of the Holy Spirit. Surprise this, my dear brother, more than enough for your wedding in the name of Jesus Christ. And I declare be healed right now. Be healed completely in the name of Jesus. Be healed completely. Your name is Jennifer. Okay, I'll pray with you. Come, I'll just lay hands on you. All this Jennifer, I'll just lay hands. I'm not getting any. Hold her. Collect the child, please. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, take away this reproach that I see in this family. In the name of Jesus Christ, I declare that the Lord is giving you a new beginning. In Jesus' name, please come quickly. In the name of Jesus, come, my dear. May the Lord bless you and honor you. Come. Reproach is taken from your life. In the name of Jesus. The power of God is coming on one ushering lady. It's an ushering lady. 
I'm seeing a mighty deliverance. Reproach is living right now by the Spirit, whether inside or outside. I'm seeing one ocean lady. The power of God is coming upon her. Father, in the name of Jesus, let that miracle take away reproach in the name of Jesus Christ. Take away reproach. You are Jennifer. In the name of Jesus, I pray for you. In the name of Jesus, I pray for you, my dear. My dear, hold her hands, two of you. Just do what I'm asking you to do. Shout Jesus as loud as you can. Because both of you need the same miracle. And God is giving you that miracle. He's terminating shame completely from your life. There is, I'm seeing a man here. You are a pastor. I know there are many pastors, I can presume. But who is a pastor here? Sir, please come. You are a pastor where, sir? Come again. I'm seeing, what do you have? I'm, I can't get, let him come. I'm seeing you. You came from where, sir? Benin. Benin. I want to pray for you. Have your church. I want to pray for you. Please stand up, sir. Stand up. You are going to write a book. The Lord is going to anoint you and you will write a book. God will use that book to bless the body and honor you too. It's a grace that I'm praying for you. Number two, sir, I'm seeing the Lord strengthening your understanding. There's a teaching grace that God is releasing upon you. I don't know you and I'm praying for you. And then I'm praying for you. You will see the miraculous in a very strange way. You may not lay hands on people like this, but the spoken word, as you are speaking, you will see God begin to honor you and things begin to happen. Can I pray for you, sir? In the name of Jesus, I release you into these dimensions in the spirit. And everything that has been said, I command that it must come to pass for you by the supernatural power of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord is releasing speed. Now, please hear this. I want to pray. I know that I always pray for this, but I'm about to pray right now. There is a very strong anointing and it's coming on people inside and outside. There are people who have compassed certain realms. God wants to shift them. Please help them. As that anointing comes, sometimes they are going to begin to run by the Spirit. Just run like this, inside or outside. Father, I'm the... Ah, my God. I decree and declare right now by the Spirit of God the grace that brings speed 10 years in one 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 by the spirit of the living god i command speed for you 10 years in one in the mighty name of jesus christ i declare speed over your life in the mighty name of Jesus I declare it you are not wasting your time you are receiving speed in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ you are a pastor come it's time to enter a new dimension step into a new level of grace I shift you by the power of the Holy Ghost signs and wonders through your hands in the name of Jesus I shift you into a new realm in the name of Jesus Christ I'm seeing the anointing of the Holy Spirit going to the media stand just that media stand I'm seeing and it's still the same grace for speed I'm seeing media stand I'm seeing that grace there are people entering strange realms of speed that God is bringing. I release you by this word of prophecy. Step into that dimension. In the name of Jesus, no power 
in existence will stop you. Hallelujah. My dear, come. This lady on red. Come, quickly, please. I'm seeing you laughing in the realm of the spirit. And the Lord is saying I should release you to your seasons of laughter. In the name of Jesus Christ, I speak over you. And I declare whatever must happen in your life for laughter to break out. I'm declaring to you in the name of Jesus, who is the son of the living God. Let it happen to you right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. There are two ladies and three gentlemen. The real grace for the prophetic. The prophetic. I will do an impartation by the end of the Sabbath. But two ladies and three men. A real grace, real grace, the eyes, the eyes to see. I quicken that grace, quicken that anointing by the power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Grace. Please don't think we are wasting our time. We are going to pray for the sick. My dear, come. This lady, God is visiting your family. Come and stand here. Where are your people? Where do they stay? Samaru. In Samaru here. Let me tell you, the month of September is a strange month of lifting for your family. You believe that? Let me pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. See, let me teach you something. You see, the word of God is very powerful. Believe it. Believe it. Don't, don't sit arguing and saying, will God touch me? Will it change my life? No. God will more than surprise you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I'm praying for this lady. And I decree and declare. the Lord grant you this miracle in the name of Jesus. The Lord is touching someone at overflow 2. Overflow 2. And the Lord is saying he's taking reproach away. Taking reproach. I'm seeing the power of God come upon someone. Overflow 2. In the name of Jesus Christ. Overflow 2. Hallelujah. We are going to pray for the sick shortly. But I'm seeing... Wow. Usually, I would, not, I would not be the person to talk about these things. But when God does it, uh, we, are, we, we serve his purposes. I'm seeing a grace for miracle alert. This is why I kept quiet. Because... You will be surprised. That means you will see a lot inside a lot of monies. There was no transaction to have necessitated it. Now, God does not do this to sponsor laziness, but it's a prophetic dimension. This is what I just saw. I declare by the Spirit of God, Father, every once and again you do this in this house to bring glory to your name. I pray by the Spirit of the living God right now, in the name of Jesus, may that grace come upon you. For many of us, what will come upon you will, will take away financial pain, financial shame. In the name of Jesus Christ. My friend, what do you do? Come, this man, this. What do you do? A businessman. Sir. A businessman. Where? In Dandume, sir. Come again. Dandume, Dandume, Katsina State. Katsina State. Yes. I want to pray for you. You love Jesus? Yes, sir. Don't let anybody, don't be embarrassed, eh? Don't let anybody tell you to do anything diabolic for business favor. Yes, sir. You see what I'm saying? Does it make sense to you? Yes, sir. I yes, hope you're not embarrassed. Yes, sir. That, don't let anybody tell you that this is what he did that worked. And you too, you should do it and customers will come. It's not true. Listen, let me tell you, Paul can plant, Apollo can water, 
it's only God that brings increase I want to pray for you father what's your name Sunday Naemeka what's that is there a name like that Naemeka Naemeka I'm hearing that name I will pray for you sir but the Lord is bringing I'm seeing the Lord bring a very strange miracle to the person with that name in the name of Jesus I take away stagnation from your business I release you by the power of the Holy Spirit into abundance and into plenty in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ I'm seeing the hand of God coming on several people for ministry but listen now this doesn't mean that you just get up and go and start doing ministry but the call of God has been lingering on your life and it's time to answer that call I'm stretching my hands Lord I don't know where these people are overflow one overflow two overflow three online in the main auditorium here father anyone that your call up is upon his or her life I'm praying oh God confirm that call right now and let them know that it's not just their imagination I declare by the anointing and by the Spirit of God draw them into their various callings into the various mantles the trainings the seasons that they must enter in the realm of the spirit to become mighty men and women of God in the name of Jesus Christ what's your name okay I'll pray for you in the name of Jesus may God grant you speed in the name of Jesus Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit huh? I take away everything in your mind that will stop you from being productive I shift you to experience the hand of God in the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah we'll pray for the sick now but I'm seeing a ring in the spirit enter the hand of a lady and then the ring breaks almost immediately now you know that this is already it may be symbolic of marriage or a disastrous thing happening that just scatters it father in the name of Jesus I don't know who that person is but I'm praying right now that anything that will push you into marriage to only last months old in the name of Jesus I curse it now by the power of the Holy Ghost I curse it now by the power of the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ I'm seeing an anointing my God come for direction especially geographic direction the Lord is showing me that there are people who came here praying they don't know exactly where to be based this is this this sounds funny but the Lord there is an anointing that is coming giving you clear direction in dreams visions prophetic intuitions some of you are saying Lord should I stay should I go should I travel should I stay in the country out of the country I'm praying right now the grace for accurate direction in the name of Jesus may that grace come upon you in the name of Jesus may that grace come upon you in the name of Jesus may that grace come upon you We're going to pray for the sick now and all kinds of situations that don't represent the counsel of God. We have to pray and trust God. We're going to do this very, very, very fast. I keep seeing something in this front row, just these people in front. I kept ignoring it, but I don't know what I'm seeing. I'm seeing something that God is showing me. Everything that was lost shall be returned unto you. Everything that was stolen. Restoration shall be returned unto you. 
everything that was stolen. There is somebody here, the Lord is bringing an anointing into your life. You are getting into oil. Listen, listen, I'm serious now. Please listen to what I'm saying. This can be a life and death prayer. You see, this spirit of death that is just sweeping around, killing people like chickens all around. Someone will just say headache and fall down and die. I pray for you in the name of Jesus Christ. I forbid the earth from receiving your body. I forbid the earth from receiving your body. And I declare every spirit of kidnapping, whether in Zaria here, Kaduna, that would just allow wicked people to come and kidnap innocent people. We, we cause that spirit and we bring the perpetrators under judgment. Two more prayer points were done. The dimension of the demonstration of the spirit, signs, wonders, miracles, the gifts of the spirit. I call that dimension. Whatever dimension is missing in your life, I speak to you. Please hear me, especially if you are in ministry. Right now and here tonight, step into that dimension. Dreams, visions, the prophetic, the gifts of the spirit being activated in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for everyone who is weary, you are tired. Life has just wrestled with your spiritual fervency. And it's as though you are about to give up. It's like the grace to continue is not there. By the Spirit of God, I supply fresh fire for the journey. Every leader here, whether a campus leader, prayer group leader, Bible study leader, church pastor, whatever kind of group, I pray for you. The dimension of grace that will keep the fire in your groups, your fellowship burning, I supply that grace upon you now. We prophesy over Zaria. We speak to the spiritual borders of this city to fight anyone coming into this city to cause trouble or cause confusion in the name of Jesus Christ. And I pray for you. Every request and every issue that was the reason why you came here, I agree with you in the name of Jesus that the next time you come here it will be to testify. Jesus and any man who says over his dead body for you to rise may their prayer be answered this night thank you Jesus let me pray the last prayer of restoration I just sense it in my spirit whatever has left your life that should not have left whether it's money you lost money you lost friends, you lost valuable relationships. In the name of Jesus Christ, by the Spirit of God, I call it back into your life now. I call it back into your life now. Praise the Lord. You are here and you are saying, Apostle, we are late but we cannot close this meeting without giving me an opportunity to hand my life totally to Jesus. Please, let's minimize movement. This for me, I believe, truly without exaggeration, is the greatest miracle. I know that there are people here under the sound of my voice who are saying, Apostle, I want to make my ways right with Jesus. You are here, overflow one, two, three, four. 
I want to give you an opportunity in two minutes. Please run overflow three now. You can just move to your projector stand and overflow four because of time. But if you are here, overflow one, two, two B, and then online, please make your way here quickly. Let's celebrate them as they come. You're saying, Apostle, I want to win that war. My friend, keep stretching your leg carefully, eh? You don't have to... Yes, you, the man with the crutch. Keep coming, quickly, please. If there are people coming from outside, please clear the way for them so that they hurry up. Clear the way very quickly for them. Hallelujah. You're joining them. Please join them quickly. I believe there are still more people. The Holy Ghost is speaking to you and telling you to not let this meeting. The Bible says it's the goodness of God that calls men to repentance. Praise the Lord. If you're joining them, come, come quickly. Now, I salute every one of you. Thank you so much for making this decision. For those making this decision online, we salute you. Very quickly, I will request that you lift your right hand and please pray after me. Do it truthfully and passionately. Say, Lord Jesus, tonight, if you're joining them, please join quickly. Please clear the way for them. Say after me, Lord Jesus, tonight, I declare that I cannot help myself. I declare that I believe that you are my savior you are my king you are my lord tonight i receive by faith the abundance of grace the gift of righteousness and i declare that i reign in this life from today and forever i have eternal life I'm a child of God, forward ever and backward never. Amen. Please keep those hands lifted. Father, we thank you. The Bible declares that whosoever will come to him, he will in no wise cast away. Thank you for bringing this one, so God, to make that declaration. We declare according to the authority of scripture that a new life begins for them tonight. A life of victory, a life of grace. In the name of Jesus. We thank you because they will go from glory to glory and from strength to strength. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Thank you. Now, there's a gentleman waving his hands at the back. Please, all of you, just follow the gentleman in contact. Hello. Scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, my son, attend to my sins. Incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed. And then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos. We have loads of content that is going to make you blessed. That is going to set you on course. That is going to set you ablaze. And don't forget to like for us. Thank you.